shirt. I'm not messing with it for the first it's a pretty good 30 minutes. I look, I look orange. But orange is an okay color, I suppose. Hey, guys. You know, I, it wouldn't be a stream of ours if I wouldn't screw in oh, with the lighting. Look at that. I did better, didn't I? Yes. Hi, guys. She thinks that... When My tractor's her, sexy? When I tell her <laughs> she looks like this right now, look at her tonight. And I'm like, you look gorgeous, you look gorgeous. And she's like, what, you know, I really mean it. Every single time I'm not doing it to, she's amazing tonight. I can always, I can tell you mean it. It's you just. Know? Um, oh, hey, Lindsay and Misty Lee. I know he's always a little bit late. So what made y'all come in here? Was it the, the thumbnail? The thumbnail was the, no, I'm just kidding. We get into that in a second. He did it. So Yay, I told you I got, um, we've had, wait a minute. Oh, okay. There we go. I always get the just Gigi Marie and Angela Gigi. I'm always like, okay, did I, cause there's different names on different hey, KC. platforms. Presley and KC and C Monroe, Lindsay Kidney, uh, Kennedy. Um, there he is. Yeah. Couldn't find him all night. He was just sleeping somewhere. But then he's he'll like, do that. Look, he jumps he's down. He's like, these guys are going live. I better, I better okay. say hey. Sawyer Brown? Just Sawyer Brown. He's Sawyer Brown. Say hi. He look, says. Look right there, Sawyer Brown. You are. Yeah. Hey, Karen, you're going to be Farmer Brown. Oh, literally Farmer Brown. Yeah, he's going to be Farmer Brown. He's going to be Farmer Brown. Farmer Brown. Woo My pink life, Hey. Hey, we're the Oklahoma G GGs. Gotcha. Well, y'all, because I always try to keep up with who's who on different platforms. Yeah. Angela GGs, the Chiefs. She loves the Chiefs. I know, and it looks like they're going places, aren't they? Yeah. Aren't they? They're a pretty I mean, good contender for it. Besides the Bills, I think that, you know, you've got four really good teams hey, in Sherry. there. Cincinnati is good. I mean, Joe Burrow. And the Cincinnati Bengals are good. <laughs> so. And Cincinnati has really good chili. Yeah. Cincinnati brand chili is really, it, they really They have their good. own style named after it. And it's it's just a good taste. I've said that before. Those of you who live, like, in the Virginia area know um, what Hard Times Cafe is. They bring you, it's, it's called Chili Mac, but it's literally spaghetti noodles with chili and cheese and onions over the top hard of it. Hard Times or Hard Rock. No hard times. It's hard called hard times. times. And cool. you would think that um, that doesn't sound so good together. It's delicious. Look, he's watching me. He's yeah. like, no, he's actually being good. He's like, though. who are y'all talking to? But he anyway. got to see his grandma today. He did. No, we just got on. Let it go. It's good to see you. We just got here. Yeah, we stopped by there to see. We were only Vin. we were only four minutes late to our stream tonight. Yeah, it's and that was my fault. It was, was a busy day. I was in a tough. We got a lot done today. We did get a lot done today. Um, Janine, hey, yeah, okay, so y'all have heard of it. I think you can even order the mix off of their website. But I um, have never looked, but it is really good. What's funny is I, for, you remember when Weight Watchers was doing the point system? Um, well, the Weight Watchers meeting was right by Hard Times Cafe. So I would go and get weighed and be like, you know, <laughs> that's fine. Because I obviously wasn't trying to lose weight. And then afterwards, I would go to Hard Times Cafe and eat. The thing with the Weight Watchers points, it does work. And then you learn in your head. Yeah. I, I couldn't be bothered. The, the cool thing about Weight Watchers is it was out like way in the beginning, like before the internet age. Yeah. So you could get these little charts and stuff. Now you just Google everything. I had a little calculator that figured it out. Did you? Hey, Seabreeze. I didn't see you pop through, but hey, hey I see you. I am. Um, I got a chicken magazine today. Well, no, we, well, but mine's cooler. This is Let true. me show mine first. So we are, we leave, live an exciting life, um, but we're also uh, older and the same things that excite I mean, us is not, um, I'm not gonna say that later, I'm not gonna say that now, but <laughs> I'm gonna show you <laughs> what I have. We had a very okay. cool, we thought about what we did today and, and it was, we were happy with what we accomplished. We were, so, the bathroom, because we live in a trailer, mm -hmm. it gets really cold. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, it, we could, we have a tarp over the window, but hey, <laughs> we, we really don't. I'm kidding. But hey, it does get blue. cold in there. So they were out of all of the heaters at Walmart, like in, in like different, you know, the normal ones that they have. 
But Sean was like, okay, there's one. Hey, Michaela. There's one in the maybe. Uh, all, see, what he'll tell you about the chicks in just a second with the back. But there was, um, he said, there's one in the as seen on TV section. And I was like, what? And we went over there and they had this. And I did get it because it You know was, how Walmart has the section where it's like as seen on TV and then it's like towards the front and it. So, and it works. I plugged it in and it works really well. It's like a little, oh, look, it's got protective plastic on. I can't wait to take that off. That makes my life. You know, um, if it's got protective plastic, like but, TVs and stuff oh like that. God, I'll I take yours take off. And she's like, no, 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 no. If, if, I, just, if I come to your house and you've got protective package things still on your washing machine, your bathroom, across anywhere, the States, I will. It. Well, no, I'm talking about like if I go to the bathroom at someone's bathroom and they've got like, let's say they have a picture frame and the thing's still on it. It's been on there for They might have wanted it to be on there. 15 years. It doesn't matter. I still take it off. But anyways, off. okay, so this is the heater. And, um, oh, I didn't even see it. Had a so it goes in the bathroom. I think that's a USB port too, is it? Oh no. Okay, but this is what's cool about it. And and to say that I'm not excited would be a lie. I almost hit you right in the head with it. Okay, I'm look. Sorry, Brown, sleeping on my lap. So this is it, right? And you're like, okay, well, it's, it's a okay, heater. Buddy, it's okay. But then watch this. There so there's like, what's you ready? That? Look at would you look at this? Gone. It's okay, Sawyer. I'll it's turn it okay, off. Baby. I'll turn it off, sweetie. Hold on. Baby, it's okay. So anyway, it's, it's done. Okay. I did it. It's all done. It's okay. Um, so it works. Hey, Violet, can you tell me that that's not the coolest thing ever? So I can jam with the light show with the heater. Now, the point of the heater is it does work really well. But isn't that cool? Hey, hell of a live. Hey, I, hey, Blue, how are you? Now, that was my exciting purchase of the day. And I do she mean to say that. exciting. What? It was very exciting. But Sean... I caught him looking at naked chicks. We've been married for about, you know, we've been married a while and it was gonna happen sooner or later, but you're gonna have magazines. I mean, I went three years before you caught me looking at other chicks. Good, Presley, I'm glad you're feeling better. Hey Jude, so, um, but it's a magazine. He's not cheating on me or anything, but he is looking at naked chicks. And I don't, I, I mean. Well, show it, we probably okay. don't get. All right, this yeah, is, this is. It's like, I feel like we're getting porn bombed if, if we do it, but. See, I, I, she caught me looking at that. He was in the bathtub looking at naked chicks. That's the best magazine ever. He's already taken the subscription card out. He's going to get a subscription to it. Um, so, so okay. Seabreeze, he doesn't want to get the chicks right now when it's this cold because tonight it's going to be in the 20s. Thank you. Yeah. He, he's See, gonna she caught do... me looking at this picture. Where's the little, is that See. the one with the little eggshell on his head? No, I'll show that show one. Show that one. Um, Hold on. Live chat reminder. I wasn't even on it. Um, I've never seen. Yeah, exactly. Good. They're naked. Isn't that cute? He said that when they hatch, they have no idea. Like that, that just has to fall off on its own. The one chick looked at the other one and said, "Like I'm seven minutes older than you. you need get, to get that, that off, off your, your head. head. That's that's not cool." That was very cute. Well, and I was special like, "Special chicks wear that." Well, and it's, it's, I've seen like Easter pictures, like when they do Easter drawings and things, I've they do it like that. A, I've never seen an egg laying chick with clothes on. Exactly. Uh, but if someone wants to make us some clothes for our chicken, we'll probably. So what did you guys, did you guys like the little montage of the, of the chicken coop? Um, I got a lot of good feedback yeah, on we did. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, And out there it sits, it's still out there and it's getting ready. What we're going to do, um, dozen of it. Oh, wow. What we're probably going to do is, you know, how the, the dog pins, um, not the runs, but like the huge dog pins that are, how, how big would you say that is? Um, it's about, it's only about 10 or 12 feet long. It's not very long. Well, they make some that are like 20 by 20. Or but the problem was, is I didn't think about that. So I've got, I've kind of got, unless we make the, the run part out towards the woods, I only have maybe eight feet between that and the side of the house. Okay. So but that's kind of, we're going to tractor way. supply and looking at that kind of stuff. Um, and that's another consideration. And she can, uh, you should get one when, um, but it's, we have to find the dog pen because even though chickens can free, you run, know, the, the, the chicken, the dog runs, but they're made for chickens. They, they kind of have the, the roof up on one end. So it's made to have like a dog house or a chicken house underneath it. And then because, Oh, well, I'm not going to have a, a ton of chickens. I didn't know that. 
What's Hebrews say? She said a fresh egg, if you put it in the water and it sinks. It, all the way to the bottom, it's, it's fresh. And the, the more that it floats up is as, as old as it is. I had no idea. I do know that you can put it in your, your hand and squeeze as hard as you possibly can and you can't break it. Matter of fact, this is what Seabreeze was telling us right there. Oh, yeah. We, I think we're going to make the, probably end up making the, the pin. Um, I know how to do like the, I, we got a, um, a dog run a long time ago, like years ago, and, and you put it together. Like it gives you the poles and the thing and, but, and, the, and the galvanized fencing and you have to stretch it. Hey, Tammy, and put it together. So then I learned with the little metal thing. So that's when chicken I learned wire. the, the cotton. Well, no, it's the galvan. We still, well, yeah. We but well the, if it. it was the chain link, I, I can do that too. Yeah. But, and the chicken coop's going to go inside of it and buys organic eggs. I can't really let them free range too much. I mean, our neighbors free range theirs. They got them running in the road and everything. But there's a lot of critters out here. Hey, Lisa, she's, she, so. that was the one that thought she, well, I guess maybe she, I don't know if she's blocked or not. Um, that's yeah, so no, weird. No, that's I had the no, one right there. Yeah. yeah, no, no. Yeah, I'm not blocked. We didn't know. I mean, Karen's I had Karen's got a that. super slick new computer. So when, when I need someone to check something like that, she's the one to do it. Oh, did we, you go check with her? We, and then... I asked her to go look. We have a graveyard of laptops, none of which, um, are functioning. And one, I need to fill out that fertility flyer for the doctor's appointment. Yeah, so we've we got, got a lot to do. I mean, I out. guess we could have got a $1,500 chicken coop in a laptop, but instead we got the $3,000 chicken coop. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. perfect. I've heard once you've had a fresh egg, you'll it's never want it. And I, and I can't, I always am like, I can't fathom that that's the truth, but I guess it is. And the duck eggs were even. Shannon. Do you have duck eggs? Duck eggs are awesome. So. Shannon, did you see our chicken coop we bought? It is the Cadillac of chicken coops. I'm sure she did. Um, there's a montage Let on the channel. Let me tell you something. Shannon was on Savage's Fuck It Up Friday yesterday, and she had her cam on. Girl, you are beautiful. You look like Kathleen Turner. Someone said that, and I was like, mm -hmm. I can see that. I was like, you know what? Sorry. I was like, all of them uh, spirit finders can eat shit. You're beautiful. <laughs> yes. yes. So you want a, do you want a chicken coop, Shannon? Are you into chickens? Are you'd like to be? No, she's getting ready for February 6th out at the Coliseum in California. That's when NASCAR kicks and off. It was hot, you're right. The um This is the first year I that I can remember that they haven't started the season in Daytona. So, there you go. Um, They're trying to push that out towards the West Coast. Where was it. the one that we drove by it and you said, you see all of those trailers, RVs, and tents? They're already waiting for a race. It was Talladega. Race. And it was like, what, two, two months two no, weeks it was, before? No, it was, it was, okay, so I thought it was the end. Uh, we were on I-20, uh, I and it was, it was Talladega. We were going past Talladega. The racetrack is right on the freeway. And you can see it really good when you're going um, hey, westbound. But we were coming eastbound, and you could see, like, they have, like, a campground, and they were already there. There was already people set up, and it was Monday, and they weren't racing that race until the next Sunday. And a lot of them were sitting outside their thing they're, they're drinking. They living out there, They were yeah. drinking beer, which, hey, more power to you, but it was, like, 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it was really I was like, I guess Monday. if you're going to go party, mm -hmm. you might as well do it up. Yeah. But there was, Shannon, there was just, I couldn't, you can't even fathom how many trailers and tents. And on a and, Monday. And, yeah, and they had raced... I want, they had raced nowhere near there. They had raced like... Angela's been to this motor speedway. I want to they say they they raced Texas. The, it was another big track the, the week before. And, um, or Kansas, kind of or Kansas Speedway or something. And I was the, telling the him before. about the hat you were wearing the other day. And I said, I think it was number 22. So Sean looks up who number 22 is. Yeah, Joey Logano. But it wasn't. It was 23, right, uh, Shannon? I got it wrong. It was 23. Hmm. Um so any of that was like i when i saw when that I it was see like bill i um i actually did some paperwork for bill elliott 10 oh, days wow, ago hell of a... haven't met chase yet but bill is in around dawsonville um who else um his brother dan elliott who builds the builds the uh motors so the whole elliott i mean half of dawsonville's got elliott in the um bubba wallace that's who she was wearing bubba wallace ah bubba um, Dawsonville is Elliott Family Parkway, Elliott Road, Elliott Circle. It, it, I mean, Dawsonville is 
the Elliots live here. I have not met Chase though. And then Bill's wife, Sheena, comes in and we help her with their paperwork and got their taxes off and all that. It says Bill so. was her man back in the day. You know, sometimes yeah. at thrift shops here, I'll see um, a lot of signed stuff. And sometimes it's the Elliots gonna, or whatever. Let me go get what, what I got. <laughs> because... I have a tickle in my throat. I hope that doesn't mean I'm... Thank you. My I straightened it. I hope that doesn't... Like, you know when you start with a tickle and it can turn into a cough? Um... Don't you, but it might have been the pork rind because sometimes I inhale pork rinds and they get in your lungs, you know, because you don't go take something to drink. And then it's like those tell me that it's not impossible to get a pork rind piece out of your lungs. They like to just sit there. Um, hold on. Um, hey, Ricky. Yeah, it's cold tonight. We have we're doing a fire and um, Sean doesn't like to leave the living room. Um, it's a sacred ground. He um, he doesn't like to leave the living room at all when there's a fire going. Which, I mean, I can understand, but then, so it kind of ties him down. I know, right? Um, yeah, pork rinds are, look, it, I don't, I can't handle a bunch of spice, so I get the plain ones. But you know what it's like when you bite into it, you inhale a piece of it, and you can't ever get it out of those lungs. All right, so here we go. So. Thank you, Ricky. These. These are cards signed by Chase. Um, so every once in a while the, the fan club people come in and they have dead letter. They can't figure out where stuff goes. So they don't know what to do with it. They're not collectors. So they say, do you want it? Um, this stuff. So if anyone's interested in a chase or Bill Elliott signed memorabilia, I got it. Shannon's um, like, uh, she probably already has it. These right here, you know, the little die cast cars that you can buy. These are the windshields that go on. This is Bill Elliott's signature oh, on each I never one. I saw that. Yeah, That's this is cool. um. So you know the cars that are about a foot long, the the big. So they pop the uh, the the windshields out. They send them to Bill or Chase to sign, and then they sign them. And there, this is them. This is uh, and it's got on the piece of tape. It talks about which car and all that to, that it goes in. That's awesome. And then Bill. Who, 18 degrees, oh my gosh. And then that's Bill. Bill signed that one, and then they couldn't figure out either who it was supposed to go to. So the fan club people are like, we're just gonna, this just, we have piles of it. And I said, do you mind if I take a few? And they're like, you can take whatever you want. That's awesome. So they, they gave them to me. I'm glad you're doing so. good today, let it go. I really am. Yeah, that that's, who would used to live in your parents' house? Oh, so my parents bought, Shannon, if you're here, if you've been following for a while, Jerry Nadu, if you remember Jerry Nadu, um, when he was with Eversham Motors back in the day with Bill, he was on that team. So he bought a house in Dawsonville. He wasn't in it very much, but when he left the team, my parents moving from Roswell to Dawsonville bought that house. It was... He was never there though, was no, he? No, it was, when they bought that, like, it was right around 9-11. It was about 2000, 2002, sometime wow. within there. So Shannon that was, Jer they bought Jerry Nadu's house. Shannon has a picture of um, her and Bill. So the, ba oh, so by the way, for y'all, the basement where Mandy and I were living is the house that Jerry Nadu used to. Yeah, so, so there ain't no sh shabby it thing. It wasn't, no. So what are y'all all here for, for the thumbnail? That it said. So let Am me. Am I supposed to tell a story tonight? I know. Let me recap. I said that every time that beast opens her mouth and perpetuates that BS about the abuse, and and I even said, you know, y'all heard me. I say he can talk about, she can talk about anatomy and whatever, but she needs to stop that because it's not true. So I said, every, we decided every time you start that. One of your dirty little stories is going to come out. And Seabreeze, I'm reading the chat. Yeah, I remember that. Your your hub your hubs is into NASCAR and has done some stuff with the. There you go. Yes. The, I mean, in, if you live in North Carolina, see, I lived in Hickory, North Carolina, in the early '80s, and that's where the Houston family was from. Um, I mean, Kelly Yarbrough used to hang around out there. Terry Gant was there, and I was little. Uh, so it was the Houston's, and it's another another family name that I can't I can't remember. But anyway, um, did you no, not the Allison. Oh wow! Anyway, I wasn't a huge NASCAR fan, but I was around it. So I would go to Charlotte Motor Speedway, Rockingham. They raced That's Rockingham cool. back in the day. So, but I was never a huge fan. But I was just around everybody. So then here, years later, we moved to Atlanta, 
near Dawsonville, and then there's Bill Elliott, and then my parents end up build, you know, buying a, a house. So I've always been around NASCAR just by default. I've uh, just been around it. So That's that's interesting. You And you like the sport. I do like the sport. He likes any sport. Really I don't though. like the sport like I follow the Braves or the George Bulldogs football, but I'm – it's if you lived in Green Bay, for instance, hey, Stormy. you would just know about the Green Bay Packers, right? Uh -huh. If you lived in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, you'd know all about Alabama football. That's kind of how NASCAR has been for me. I've this just Storm, lived. Stormy Jane said her dad was the track physician at Texas World, Spe Texas wow. World Speedway. That's awesome. It's, um, it's back he has in Cal the... Ripken. Hold on. Pamela has Cal Ripken Jr.'s autograph. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Baltimore. I mean, NASCAR used to be regional, you know, in, in the 70s and 80s, and it was North Carolina, and, and everyone lived around there. But, you know, Jeff Gordon's from California. It's, it's kind of, um, they, uh, you know, national. And actually, a lot of Formula One guys have come over to, you know, from the international scene to race on the NASCAR because good money. Yeah, it Make is. a lot of money, so. Um, they're talking about, yeah, so I... I when people, and, and Sally Sunshine is the one that said this, when people brag about how much they're getting and how they're getting it there, and, and right? Unless it's me, I mean. Yeah, unless it's him. But I mean, right, you know, when you're saying you're doing every which way and you keep talking about it, but I don't care. I, I wish that she would so she could move on. But, because um, I know what you had, girl. I know what you had I'm with it. So I got you. I know you miss it. But you have to move Man, on. Nick Mandy had a nice little sound bite. Yeah, it was that. funny. Yeah, it was gross. <laughs> it was disgusting. And and it's like a, like a junior high kid who's never really had sex, but they want to pretend like they have. So they come up with this, like, 40-year-old virgin. They feel like sandbags. Remember? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that line? And they're like, oh, wait, you're a virgin. Because he said, I love squeezing the, they're like sandbags. It was in 40-Year-Old Virgin. If you haven't seen it, you don't know it. I've seen 40-Year-Old Virgin. Yeah. And he, oh, yeah, because he was trying to describe it. Yes. And they're like sandbags. And the guys are like, The guy goes, wait, no. you're a virgin. No, no. So. Um, and it's Ernie Elliott. That's the, that's the engine builder. I was trying to think of his first name. but. Um, yeah, Karen, it, she was saying that she had like 15 orgasms. If if you are counting to 15, you're not having 15. That dude must have been an impressive dude. <laughs> she said that now that she's had a hysterectomy, these big O whatever don't hit her cervix. Hmm. <laughs> it's like a teenager. <laughs> anyway, but that's neither here nor there. I'm, I'm happy for her. She can go out and get as much as she wants. But I'm and, supposed and, to tell a, tell a story. Yeah, but that's that, what right? I'm getting to. So I didn't get the chance to look at the poll, and y'all could probably change the change the win. Yeah, they don't talk about that. Did Karen look at the poll? She could probably pick one of them. She out. said that he bent her every which direction there was. That he was down there for fifteen minutes. They did this for. I was like, it would take thirty six hours, and then supposedly yeah. they did it till four a.m. And He's then she went down there trying to find his car keys. Come on. <laughs> All right. So I was just like, you know, when you start adding that time together, it's like. Okay, you would have it'd be a week's worth, right? Mm -hmm. And then if he was truly like that, um, he wouldn't have been going home with you. He would have a better this choice is the one at thing closing and time. I, I didn't hear any of this, but the one thing is, is here's the telling thing, girls and guys, but girls, if you're having that rocking Friday night, anything like that, are you going live at four in the morning, right? Or, or are you knocked out for an hour and a half, two hours talking about it? <laughs> Who right. goes live at 4 a.m. after a night like that? Right. If you if you had, you know, 15 of those and he did that and you were spent, you were this, go to sleep. Yeah, you want to go to sleep. You care about so, that. Maybe Waffle House afterwards, but really, no. She lost her, she did lose her main account. Yeah, that was terminated. Um, so, I, you know, it, like I said, I don't know why she likes to kiss and tell, but it, it's, it, it's very strange to me. It must have something to do with the narcissism because most people don't have to advertise they're having sex. They're just doing it. And let me be real honest. In Jacksonville, North Carolina, where there's, what, an army post, Bragg is there. Bragg is, and about, well, Bragg is about 100 miles away. But, I mean, Camp Lejeune, it, it's... It's no feat to get laid if you're you a know, female in Jacksonville. Dozens of thousands of Marines. Right. You know, so it's no, in Jacksonville. it's no feat. To be able to do to to do that, but like I said, if it makes her move on and shut the hell up, 
go do it. Get I mean, him to do put it, it. To put it into perspective, the Army has got 10 divisions where the Marine Corps has got three, the only two active divisions. So the Army is much, much bigger than the Marine Corps. But if you're in the Army in Jacksonville, you are in the minority. I mean, you're clearly the minority compared to the Marines. There's way more Marines than I Army guys. I don't think guys. they care. No, just kidding. They want the good stuff. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, well, I'm no, trying to set this up. No, they do care. No, no, I was, you know, I'm joking. I was saying they're, they're waiting to hear the whatever. But what I need to know, what I need, don't be sad. No, I'm, I was I'm, joking. Try, I'm trying to anticipate what stories. Yeah, y'all are going to have to tell us which one um, got it. Because I didn't go back and look at the poll. I couldn't find it. That's why I said y'all can probably change you know, the one that was the winner. Which story time do you want to hear? Yeah, I don't, I don't keep up with that. Y'all have to tell me. Well, oh, and then last night, I didn't tell you this. The date supposedly started out, she met, went out with a female, right? Really? And then it morphed into, you know, what? let me ask you a question. What the hell happened to her daughter while she's going home with men? I mean, I know she's 22, but what the hell happened? She just left her at the bar? How did that go down? Because she posted a picture, she was with Becca. So, I mean, and Sean said, she'll just tell Becca I'm going home with a dude yeah, and just I mean, leave her there. I, 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 I found it hard to believe that. I mean, the Becks that I knew wouldn't do that. I mean, she wouldn't. But, I mean, this was, Becca was barely 21 when I left. So, I mean, that's it, just, that's, that's very strange to me. That, that Becca was 19. She was born in 2000. So, she's only just turned 22 this year in February. So Right. She's a cute girl. Yeah. So, um, the other thing is that, um, when, was y'all's song, and I don't care if it was, Rock Me Mama? Rock Me Mama? Like a southbound train or whatever? No. Okay. She was like, and I don't care if it was, but she was doing some drunken dance and said, that's our song or whatever. And, and I know Whiskey, uh, Tennessee Whiskey was supposedly bill and her song or clint or whatever so i was just curious i don't know that song <laughs> <laughs> so anyways um <clears throat> i have a tickle in my throat and i keep is it gonna be a cough it might be babe. but placeholder you're gonna keep going out hunting dick the next time you're gonna pick up the wrong dick and you may never make it home that's mm. is you know that's a very that's a very true thing oh blint i like that oh passed around the office won the poll okay oh that was just um, it's who she started with, and then... I'll just give you a number, I guess. But it was the office that you worked in. Yeah. There's really not a story behind that. It's just that there was four of us in that office, I think, I guess. And, yeah, so... Not all... I wasn't like no, one not or that two you or anything, but just... But she was hot and heavy on not trying to get herself a... Yeah, a, yeah. Yeah. There was a, there quite a few people who knew her. And at the time, like you said that you believed the story she told about John because she said the same thing that she's now saying about yeah, you. Yeah, the same exact him. stuff. And I would just, I and mean, you I, believed it's, it's it. kind of predictable because the stuff that she's saying about me, she was saying about him. That's exact. See, that's, and, and, so, and, and she's so, starting to say it apparently about this Clint mm -hmm. dude. So she tried to take a restraining out, uh, order out on this guy's wife. Um, this yeah. stuff is not new. Oh, and that picture where she said she was in the picture, that one on the left, is that her? That does not look like, that's not her. Yeah. Not her. Um, not you. So you, I would imagine those girls were minors because if well, you're lying they, about I being in the picture. I know that they, I know that they were, um, that was before I was with her, but they were college girls. So Maybe some of those so, are about, of, some of those college girls are over 21. Some are blue. blue I, by, I hope you are in my prayer. She said, hope my chemo goes well. You are in our prayers. Um, yeah, blue. keep fighting that. So that's, I know that that made me sad, but that's okay. It does. That's blue's a good one. Yeah. She's very good. Um, so Let's do one that's a little more interesting. Yeah. There's... How many of you have heard, have y'all heard the entire story about the $6,000 insurance policy she stole? Or, I mean, some of you may have heard it. Let me know how many people are in here that haven't heard it. Um, I see you, Blue. Um, yeah, that's... We're watching you, Blue. It says, I'm confused why she thinks men want her and women want her to be like her as a celebrity complex. But when she starts saying everybody's jealous of what? You have nobody. You live in a nothing. And I'm not trying to be mean, but you are a very, very... Blue saying, uh, love you all, yes. Love you. You are a... You're a 
We'll see you in here real soon, Blue. Let's let's put it that way. You should, Barbara's Sorry. never heard it. Um, never heard that one. That one. That one is one that was personal because. Okay, so you Tell guys. The story. Okay, so you guys know I had the condo on the beach, and I, Crystal E. Hart showed pictures of my condo, docks the condo, and again, Crystal, if you're watching, we're good, right? We're, Sean, look, we're okay. Should we show that before you get into yeah, it? Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna show you. So you're brown. I can't. No. Oh, he sat up. He was tucked on. He was sleeping right there. You can show him the fireplace. That's our trailer's fireplace. <laughs> look. Tell me that's not the cutest. They're like, no, we don't. We want to hear the tea. We don't want to see the dog. We're not here for. We're not here for Sawyer Brown. We're here for the story. But I'm gonna let him tell it. It's not the first time so, she's taken his money and it. Well, he's, he's awake. The terror's awake. Okay, go ahead. So, um, and I'm gonna the, some of the, the 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 stories that go with it too, because so we had the we got the condo. Um, it was my condo, and that was before Doctor Phil. And that's where we lived. And y'all remember, um, so a lot of the good sound bites, like the one that was floating around recently with Becca and I both, that was all in my condo. My condo is in North Topsail Beach, North Carolina. You literally could open the sliding glass door and just kind of... It was a good location. It was, you know... It really was. And that's, you know, after we had broken up for about nine months and I stupidly was trying to make it work. This was back in 2016... Yeah, 2016 September. Um, I got a, I got a uh, condo right on the beach. It was a two bedroom, two bath condo. I lived there for a couple of years, um, most of it, time with her, some without. And that's when the doctor Phil got in touch with us while we were living there. I worked the third shift out there on the island and stuff. So when she went to her dream space, that time, all that, well, I was living in the condo and she was living with me off and on. And then after Doctor Phil was kind of the last time she spent any time in the condo. She went to Jacksonville and got her apartment. And it was because um, that's when Crystal and her were beefing and Crystal had gotten a warrant out for her. So all the cops did was wait for her to come to my condo and they would just wait. It was the last two times she ever came there was that she got arrested both times she oh, went. Wow. So she wasn't coming back to the condo anymore. Um, so that's the, the, place that we're talking about um so she moved to jacksonville and i was living in the condo it's kind of a good kind of arrangement but it was new year's eve it was so i lived there a year so that was december i want to say of 2017 when the whole e-heart thing the courts thing happened uh well that's when she first got arrested we didn't adjudicate that until may but that new year's eve which had been to 2017, 2017, 2018, 2018, that New Year's, um, we got iced in. It was a, it was a bad ice storm in North Topsail Beach, North Carolina. And I had gone home to see my kids here in Georgia. And when I came back, I knew that the weather was bad, but I didn't know how bad. So I come back to my condo, y'all, it had broke the pipes. And it was like an ice skating rink in my condo. It was like 10, 20 degrees out at the beach. The pipes had broke and um, the water had spilled about an inch of water in my condo and then it froze. So there was extensive damage. And then the pipes broke above me and that water was coming down too. It was a mess. So I <laughs> could live there. So I salvaged whatever I could salvage and went over to her place in North in uh, Jacksonville was living there. Um, so, and I started working it, you know, working it with my neighbor. It ended up not ending, going too well with my neighbor, my, my landlord, not my oh, neighbor. Oh, I was like, what? With my landlord. And he was trying to get people in there. Now, at, during this time, I did not know about my landlord, who I believe has passed away as of now, but he had stage three cancer, you know, um, throat cancer, and was really not with it, you know, so... He was supposed to get contractors over there to fix it right away, and he really never did. And it, you know, January became February, all the way until about June, mm -hmm. May or June time frame. It started to warm up. There was mildew everywhere. So I put a big insurance claim in on all my stuff that was ruined. And 
you know, I told. Because she said, don't worry about it. Yeah, You're not going to get anything. Chris was like, don't worry. I'm never going back there. This is what she would typically do is when she cut sling load from a place, lease or no lease, she would just leave. And so she would always leave me to clean the place up, move everything out, make nice with the landlords and this and that. And this was about the fourth time. The rent house that you guys knew about that when we split up that first time, you know, that was the one that was on my credit that, that where I couldn't rent anything. That was two places before the condo. And that's now off my credit. I live. We fought that it's off his credit. Yep. It's, but I think it went yeah. under hers. <laughs> I don't know, but, but I'm not, I'm now able to provide the love of my life with a nice place to live. Um, when I lived in Texas, I was not never on the lease out of Texas. Mm -hmm. It was Mandy with them. the help of my father-in-law Then I was never on that lease. So, um, but now times have changed. So you filed the thing, you took so, the pictures. And so like we were, I put in an insurance claim I had, and she was like, whatever, screw it. I'm not, I'm not helping you with that. That's all you, whatever you can get out of it, it is yours. And I don't want nothing to do with it. So she didn't have anything to do with it. So I did the insurance claims. I filed everything. And that was that I put the, I, Put the claim in and then you're waiting for and it and i'm waiting for it and i'm waiting for it and i'm waiting for it and i'm asking her and this and that and i'm waiting for it and i never hear anything so finally um i'm all worked up it's about two and a half months later and i'm ready getting ready to call. To, to call the insurance place to figure out um where the money was and um that's when she finally goes well i had got i got the money she said before you call before you call I got the money. And not only she rerouted, tell him. Yeah, well. Tell him. <laughs> yeah, um, so what she had done, she didn't want nothing to do with it. They had made a phone call to her, the insurance people to her phone because that was part, I mean, her phone number was on our renter's insurance. And she was like, blah, 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 you know, whatever. And they said, well, where should we send the check? Then they said, well, the check is in the amount of and they gave her the number, and so she gave them her routing number, her bank account. It was number. six thousand. We've been pretty. And it was six thousand dollars. So we didn't. Nobody knew it was going to be that much money. So she just had them wire the money into her account, and she decided and that she about wasn't it. going to tell tell me anything about it. And what did she do um, with the money, Sean? Well, what was the <laughs> what was the name of the business? Patra Smythe. No, what was the name of the business? You guys know. Remember when she was going to do the business? The concierge service? Yeah, what there? was the name of that concierge service? I don't know. Someone uh, will know. Y'all know. Um, I don't remember it. She always has apparently done stupid shit like this. Um, I'm reading the comments, but what is the name of that? What was the Al name? Altruso. Altruso. Yes. She was had spent thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars on brochures for a business that she didn't own. Um, she was dumping money into this thing and <laughs> so I know this, and this is what I say when people, when all this stuff comes out, it's a little embarrassing for me, but a lot of the stuff that has come out, I didn't know anything about, you know, I, I, that's all I can say is, is that I didn't know any of this. So, Hey, oh, hail. then, you know, so I, she said, I got the money. So of course, you know, I, you gotta understand, I'm in this relationship, so I'm pretty fucked up. Y'all, y'all knew that. About and you were me. gonna give her half of it. And, and I said, all right, all right, all right, we're gonna split it right down the middle, and um, oh, that's right. I and then, that. and then you just give me half of it, and you can take it for whatever you want. Even though she didn't want nothing to do with it, it already been she spent. She spent it. She got me a used laptop and gave me about hundred and fifty dollars, and was pissed off that she did that. Um, so that is the the lengths of the stuff that would happen it was pretty constant if something like that was to happen between us which you would never do it but i'm you know where my mental is right now is i would drop i would mm -hmm. i would not know how to act i wouldn't yeah. i would be shocked but nothing was shocking so that's the story she just took the money and decided i'm not even gonna tell my husband about it how does that work guys did she how also, does that work did she take some of your va back pay too um, yeah, I'll, I'll tell that story too. I'll tell the VA back pay story too. And this is why in hindsight, the relationship that I was in, in the, my life was, I was never going to get ahead. I was never going to, I mean, you'd see how Mandy and I just in our, um, we're going to be starting on our third year together here in May, right? Mm -hmm. Um, year and a half of marriage. You guys have followed us and you know, we 
shut it down for a while, but you guys have seen us get a little bit better, get a little bit better. Our live got a little bit better. You guys see it in every dream and every goal we're that we've had, all of our dreams we've that... kind of got them. It hasn't been easy, but we said we were going to be together. We said we were going to live together. We were going to go through these divorces. We were going to, we moved to Georgia together. We have our own place. Um, we're working on having a child. We want to do that. The whole thing about like me having chickens, Missy. I thought I was completely on my own. This one here is the one that pulled the trigger on the big chicken coop out there. I would have just bought a little thing. She said, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it right. It's going to be nice. It's because of the way when you. you talk about the chickens, you light up and I, that's I mean, awesome to I, me. I'm still trying to get used to having somebody that treats me with this level of respect. It's it. You guys that have been together 20, 30, whatever <laughs> years, you're like, duh, dumbass. That's how it's supposed to be. But that's not how my life was. Um, Before you tell the video thing, this is an example. I won't give the dollar amount, but mm -hmm. when when I get a paycheck on the week, they still cut a check. And I go and I cash it. Um, and I make pretty good money. Well, they charge $12 every time bb and did that I would go cash it. So I finally said, okay. And I took Sean in there. I said, you got us. I'm going to open an account. I put a, a sizable amount of money. I mean, a sizable, we, we put it in there. Mm -hmm. And they gave us the temporary debit card and right. um, while, we, while we have the other one waiting for it. So um, we had breaks and some things that we had to do. And I, I was car like, repairs car, I was like, like okay, that. so Sean has that debit card. And I had said, well, that would, can be something that we use it for. Well, he, um, he left it at that. So yesterday I said, wait a minute, because we had a lot of stuff come out, like a lot of expenses this time. So we were going to start trying to figure out how to rearrange. We were going to figure out how to how get to... through this weekend because things are tight this weekend. So I said, I go, mm -hmm. Sean, what about the da, 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 and BB and T? And he said, the money and BB and T. Yeah. He said, well, I was gonna, like, skipping yeah. the amount. Yeah. And he was like, no, I haven't touched that. And I said, you have, cause you had, he goes, oh, I didn't even realize I had the card. And I said, no. And I said, that's, he said, I just assumed that you spent it and I didn't know what you spent it on, but that's okay because it was your money. Yeah. And I said, that is not how it works. And for you people that your relationship works different, that that's on you, but that's what he's used to. He's mm. used to and I, my I, money is mine. Yours is mine. Everything I, is mine. I'm so grateful that I have a woman that works because I didn't, hey, Paul. I, if she didn't want to work and, or when we have a baby or whatever, it's okay. I got that. Yeah. I have my pensions and I have a really good job. She doesn't have to. That's not how this woman rolls though. So yeah, I had just thought that. Right, Shannon. I had thought that, okay, she had put that, she essentially took a paycheck to open up one of her p full paychecks um, that we normally use and to And I took to him so that week. he would be on the account. There's right. that. And I wanted him on it. I, so I said, all right, that's what she wants to do with her, her paycheck and that's an account that we're going to have. And I'm thinking about moving my paycheck over to that account and then my pensions will be in one account and this and that. A lot of people do that. Right. So I, I just thought, well, that's her money and that's her, that's her account. She's got a card. She can use it for whatever she wants to use it for. And I was, I assumed she had. Yeah. I didn't know. I, I don't know every dime that she That's spent. what I'm saying. I'm not. So when she, when she came fr you know, yesterday and said, hey. I had well, forgotten. That's another thing. I'd forgotten about she that. She goes, we have that account. And I'm like, well, is there any money in it? She goes, I don't even I have a touch card. It. You have the card. I don't even have the card. I didn't know. Yeah. So that's an example. How sad is that? And yeah. he's going to tell the VA back pay, but he had to actually get a bank. In 2015, he had to open a bank account with his dad because she was draining all of the money out of the account while they were separated, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. She, we were getting divorced then. And she doesn't understand that when you say you want to call it off and you're separated and you want a divorce, that means you stop using oh, Paul said all he the cried other stuff. For you cried for you when she tore up your baseball cards um you had some good ones sean i myself was a collector back in the day who said that um paul he's paul marcus his brother name. i mean that's i think that is the biggest i think that's her biggest viewed video that she's ever done it's like close to hundred thousand views or something well like she that. lost that channel so not anymore. but i mean <laughs> that's another example most of the the stuff that she did her best most popular videos were the ones that i was in when she had her channel. And then when she started to drag me um, in 2019, when we split up, hey, she got she got more views and more ad sense for those those type of videos. Mm -hmm. um, they went 
not viral, not millions of views, but in card collectors or in veterans streams. She probably and got stuff some that. really awful comments yeah. too on it. I don't. So that's how that worked with the six thousand dollars. She just took it. So if you can imagine living a life, guys, and you're you, any any time you get ahead, you get six thousand dollars in back pay or in insurance. You use that. It's kind of like a nest egg. You start with it, and you can build around that. Um, we all work hard, right? So. We have money, we save as much money as we can, but you have to build, you have to set goals and you have to work towards those goals. Most of us aren't fortunate enough to just say, oh, we need $50,000 to just have it. And to be fair, he you is know? teaching me how to do that part of it because mm -hmm. I've never been, you know, good at saying, well, okay, let's, you know, he, he's good at planning ahead. I never plan. It's like the alcoholic way of thinking. I, I would exist you know, mm -hmm. one day to the next. And he looks ahead and says, well, no, because we're gonna need groceries and some stuff this amount so it makes sense so he's taught me how to do that how to to see the bigger picture and not just um yeah i mean goals aren't okay how how what's the what's it cost to pay off a car you know you, Hi, I love you don't Lucy. and some in, anyway the way that i existed was the fact that i will never get ahead i will live paycheck to paycheck she's i, I she always mm -hmm. bitching about how i worked retail jobs and i never did this i never did that i never could you know, between my credit being constantly wrecked and the reputation is that people don't want to hire people like that. Yeah. You know, so I would work retail jobs. Um, and that was how I existed. I paid all the bills at the first of the month. I gave her about a thousand dollars cash. And then I lived paycheck to paycheck, a retail paycheck um, for the rest of my life. And that and that included saving money to go see my kids and, and just whatever. That was my existence. So it's very, very different. And that's a prime example of why. I'm not broke. I've never been broke. But whenever you get back pay or whenever you get bonuses or whatever you work overtime, that money was going to she do stuff like take the money or it was, you know, I had to keep a lawyer on retainer because it's dumb, dumb shit she would do. You know, it's just one thing after the other all the time. Um, so the other story is about the VA back pay. You know, I retired from the military and, you know, you guys that retire, guys and gals, once you get rated, you know, you get back pay from when, when you submit your claim, right? So you get, it might take a year, two years, could, whatever. Yeah, you get all then, that money and then, But it, it, it's back paid to that date. So it was, two thousand. I want to say it was 2014, 2013. Do y'all remember um, a couple of years ago where she was calling calling people on the phone and telling them to go to a person's house? And it was June, you know, Mandy and I just got together. My neighbor called, my old neighbor called it's and said, hey, yeah, the girl, hey, yeah. Right? the girl, yeah, the girl that slapped. You guys her. remember that it was would have been three, three Junes ago. She got the shit slapped out of her by um, a neighbor. <laughs> so when we when if you guys remember that, that was the first place we lived in in North Carolina in a place called Alligator Bay. We lived on a river. I had us in a nice house. Um, it was a duplex. Aww. And if you all remember, I got a call from my neighbor, my old neighbor asking if I was still with her and this and that because strange men were showing up at her house. Do you understand yep. what this do you, girl did? Do, do you remember when she was doing that? She'd had her call-in mm -hmm. show and she was t sending, sending them over there. And saying the doors unlocked, just come on but, in and stuff like that. I don't know if y'all remember that. So they that was remember. right a, just a couple months after we broke up. Um, it was June and she and I had just gotten together. I don't think we were out in the open with it yet. No. We weren't even out with y'all yet. That it, And I was doing my vlogs again. It was about the time that I did the, <laughs> Hell of a... did the shrink. Tomahawk sees the shrink. They it was remember. about that time. So, in that house. That was the first place we lived. It was 2000, 2000 in the end of 2013 time frame. October 2013, we lived there two years. Um, so, during that time, I am... We're struggling because we've just moved to North Carolina. I am not... I'm just got rated by the VA. So, and I wasn't rated 100% like I am now. So I was having, trying to find a job. I was paying a lot of child support to Jessica for the girls at the time. And I was having a hard time finding the job and I wasn't getting that much money from the VA. So it was hard. It was hard, but I was doing what I had to do. Um, I was working at a furniture store. I was selling furniture. Those of you that know the area, Rose Brothers Furniture in North Carolina, that's where I work. So I'm in, I'm in Wilmington at work <laughs> and I decided to check my bank account and there was like $5,000 in my bank account more than it should have. And I couldn't figure out why. And they said it was a VA payment. So 
I didn't understand that because my back pay should have been something like seventeen or eighteen thousand dollars, not five thousand. Oh right? wow! So I, I didn't. I, I said so. I was upset with the VA because I'm like they were supposed to pay me seventeen thousand dollars, and I only got five. So I'm kind of like, what the hell? So. I call home and I'm like, hey, the VA, you know, the good news is I got some back pay from the VA. We can catch up on all the bills and stuff that we need to do. But the bad news, it was only $5,000. I'm short about $12,000. And she was like, you know, she was really kind of evasive about it. And I didn't understand. So she says, well, when you get home, we'll, we'll talk about it. And I was like, okay. So I worked that day. It was a Saturday. And I get in the car and I drive back. People, when I got to the driveway, there was a new car in the driveway. New being relative. <laughs> it was a used car, but yeah. it was a different car. And, and I thought someone was there. Um, and I went in and she goes, yeah, I bought that car. People, my, my back pay hit. She saw it in the bank account and went out and bought a car and took about four thousand dollars and moved it to another account which car was that the murano no it was like a it was a a, a pontiac vibe <laughs> and it was about a four thousand dollar car that some dude so that the used car lot sold her for seven so she overpaid for it she's a dumb placeholder before we never said she was i smart. even knew that the money was in the account that was before we had separate accounts so so this is the life that i lived it was like i was never going to get ahead never and he never. accepted that he just and accepted. that was that was my for better or for worse this was before youtube this was before youtube we were even on youtube um she, so yeah she that's thinks the kind that, of shit would ha that would she happen she thinks that everything that he made she was entitled to my ex-husband got a pretty sizable back pay too i what was it thirty two thousand or something um of course, we at that time we did whatever, but that wasn't my money. That was his money for his years of service and that and the pension that he was entitled to. That wasn't. It's so strange to me. I guess because I don't function like that. That um, <laughs> they're, they're trying. To, they're always trying oh my to get. God, speak I know, the devil, they're yeah. always trying to get me to do some maintenance work on a car I don't have anymore, and the emails come to Brian. So that was funny. That's why that popped. Through She's laughing because yeah, that because that, they're it's a satellite radio subscription for the car. He still at one time he was still paying for it. I yeah, was like, you some, might want somebody's get... got her old Chrysler. But yeah, so getting it, free satellite the, radio the, anyway. The thought process with her always seems to be. I'm entitled to all of it. You, you, you um, are secondary to the fact that I want to buy this, and that, and this, and that. Tell them about the smoothie shop. Oh, that recently. was the story that I was going to tell. But before we, we go on with that, see, that's you trying to make heads or tails or something. Like you always tell me when I'm trying to make heads or tails or something. That's like, like, that's like trying to argue with a toddler. It is. It's like, when you have the malignant narcissist, write it down. <laughs> malignant narcissist and just look it up now that i'm that i lived with one mm -hmm. a severe malignant yeah, narcissist with i'm going to go out on the limb and say a little bit of a sociopath um mm -hmm. and there's other diagnoses but when you live in that and you're in the middle of it and we've got a lot of people that follow us here because they are very open about it that they were in a narcissistic relationship and they they got out of it, you know. Um, we have quite a few in uh, here right there's now. There's a lot that of I people know. that yeah. have been in these relationships. Y'all know, and I don't know if it gives you guys comfort to see someone else have getting gotten out of that. But <laughs> it's it's easier. Correct me if I'm wrong. When once you get out of that, I'm three years away from that. You can see stuff, and and now you can compartmentalize everything that happened in a different light. You get you get healthier mentally. And emotionally, it makes sense. This this cat HG Tutor, um, for the life of me, I don't understand and that why Diane and Wendy wanted to have him on. I guess it was just for popularity, for clout, or whatever. I don't understand why how you take a narcissist and bring him into a community. The guy is literally sitting there on the live stream telling you what a piece of shit he is. And, um, and he's, and you could hear people were like, Oh, he's got this voice and this sexy voice. And every time someone would say that, or was on panel saying it, he wouldn't say anything. Cause he's just reeling people in. 
narcissist only cares about what they can get from you. Yeah. They have a, a, a hole that can never be filled. So mm -hmm. the way I look at it now is that that was what she thought of me as I was supply. I was the main source. So my income, my everything, it belonged to her. Mm -hmm. She's and a she had sure. to figure out in her mind, she had to justify anything that she gave back to me. When she takes $6,000 from me, she is justifying in her mind. That was the maintenance that she had to do to keep me where she needed to be, which was I'll give him $150, buy him a laptop. Believe me, I caught hell hey, for Alex. it. I caught hell for that. You know, but that's what narcissists do. If they think they're going to lose or they're not in the discard phase, they will, they'll throw you a bone grudgingly to keep you where you need to be. And that's how my life was. Um, knowing that she had somebody that was going to shed their skin to make sure she had legal representation, to make sure she had a roof overhead, to make sure she could drive a car, to make sure she could eat. Yeah. Um, That's why with Manic Mandy, he's like, sorry about your left TT. Yeah. <laughs> it's I mean, on my Twitter. It's like, sorry about you. If she's in here, she'll say, she was like, you had a good man and you, I, I don't know what to tell you. No. <laughs> it's so funny. When HG Tudor was talking about, what was he talking about? He was warning people about, it was just the, just today. We were listening to it and he was saying something about what the narcissist does. Um, to, hold on. To the DM that I just got. I'll I'll ask Karen to do it right now. Al says she comes in peace and she's still blind. Well, <laughs> Hold on, this is um. Anyway, go ahead. Did what you hear was that, it, though? Karen? What um, was it's it? It was Al's. something. It was something. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry. That um, HG Tudor said today, and if he had said it a year ago. Oh, that the, 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 someone will say a girl will go. I love soccer too. That's what he says. Mm -hmm. When you meet a when you meet a narcissist, chances are they've been targeting you. They have been looking at you from a mm -hmm. distance. But when you meet them, and all of a sudden they miraculously like the same they soccer love team, all of the same they like things all that you the like. stuff that you like, and they know about it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's exactly what they do. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what they do. Oh, Shannon said she pulled for you so long. And for the people that, that are saying stuff to Sean, he goes back in the bathtub and reads through the chat. So he'll read, see, yeah. he'll see mean, what you said. But a lot of people, I was too, all joking, aside, all joking aside, I was one of his biggest things going, this, this MRF -er is smart. He's sexy. Yeah. He is a good man. He is, I'm like, but I guess he's just going to spend the rest of his life with her. I don't, I mean, but whatever. Your you, you said your husband was a little wary. Yeah, my husband, he always was he like. He was like, that one right there. Yeah, I was like, I don't know about, he probably saw it. But um, that was just it. I used to be like, he's going to be with her until the bitter end. Um, but he could do so much better. Now, I never knew that I would be the one that, that to do it. I tell it, you guys, but, there was three people. I say this all the time. The night of Eda happened. When you, and I had never seen, like when Draven's script played that, I kind of watched it. I didn't comment. Um, when you hear my, you hear my phone, bling, bling, bling. In the background, there's three people. It was Mandy True. It was Sam Telfer. It was Mama Beth. Those three were all, they were blowing my phone up. Yeah. Um, I talked to a couple other people. They checked in on me. Yeah, I was But like, those were the three that were the most, um, yeah. those were, that's what you heard talking to me. It's still surreal them. sometimes when we're like out to dinner or whatever. I'm like, I'm I'm having lunch with Tomahawk Sean, and and he yeah. loves me. He's not. Yeah. I don't have to watch him going through hell anymore. I, yeah. you know what I mean? Yep. It's, but it, it, it's I watch things, and sometimes I have to just okay. keep keep my comments to myself because sometimes, um, I mean, a narcissist is a narcissist, and. Abuse is abuse. The Hold only on thing that I have a hard time with is when people try to perpetuate or try to insinuate that I abused her. Um, just simply because the relationship was toxic, I must have abused her. Now, they might think that that um, harsh language, maybe that's a form of abuse or whatever. But um, I'm going to tell you something. A narcissist doesn't... The first time you really go after a narcissist, they're going to have you locked up. They're going to they're gonna go tell everybody about it. And I think the biggest thing that people say that is I say yes, is that all the, all the crap that she talks, she doesn't have, you know, she tapes every facet of her life. 
there would be things for her to show. Yeah. Um, the only thing that she shows some old, like, person of interest picture of me, like it's a mugshot, and then she applies it to a totally different story than what that picture is from. And that's all I say about it when people ask me about it. Yeah, that was never you know, a mugshot. It was never. It wasn't even it a mugshot. No, it wasn't. Um, and when she looks at that, takes that picture, and then she tells a completely different story. Um, yeah. Karen, can you send it to his? Because I, I, hold on. If I pull this down, let me see if I can see it without losing the whole shebang. Yeah, I don't think I can. But, I mean, things like, I pay attention to the community. I pay attention to comments. I don't have to. I don't have to say anything. Oh. Like when people says, why is she hiding her channels? She hides her channels when other people discover who she is Thank you, and Tim. take pictures and take her videos and review them. Mm -hmm. When that happens, she hides her channel. Mm -hmm. um, I know that, but it doesn't do me any good to, to, to do a vlog and talk about it or to explain that to people. The, one know? of the other things like, you know, like Shannon said, do you remember her saying, are you tired of it yet, Sean? Do you remember that? Her saying it? Yeah, Shannon said that. Shannon said, um, I remember asking Sean once, aren't you tired yet? I, I Lots think that, of people did. I mean, it's like, I I had, 10 days ago, I was, I had COVID. Yes, pink life. I had COVID for 10 days. Uh, 10 days ago is when I was getting over hey, my COVID. Lavender. But I was, in hindsight, I was sick probably a week before I actually tested. And I thought, I thought I was burned out of my job because I work a lot. I work six days a week, um, eight to 10 hours a day, you know, sometimes longer, 60 hours a week. And I thought I was burned out. Um, but that whole week prior to when I tested, which was Monday, the holiday, um, really I was sick. But um, when you are so sick, you just keep on keeping on. Right. So the question was, to answer your question, aren't you tired? The answer is yes, but you don't know you are. And I always say to people when they're talking about stuff or when they flip flop back over, it's, it's always some people that are in, in our chats that will be over in her chat. And at first it was like, we're gonna block you, we're gonna do this. And, and all I say is she hasn't hurt them enough. Yeah. When you get hurt, enough you'll stop okay al there you go you know <laughs> She's, um you're right and 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 that is appears to be wax boss if you're i think i i don't think this channel has her blocked i do and i can't figure out how to unblock her on my channel if you're watching you are welcome to come in to the chat um she hurts you is is what happened and she got sick of it that she was lied to well there's there's people that are over in there and i'm always telling mandy man he's like if they're over there we blah blah blah, blah. You know, block them, we don't have, because obviously we don't want to associate directly with it. But I just have to say, look, this is a drama community. This community, a huge part of this community, you think of the channels that are doing whatever. You think of Randy, you think of Diane and Wendy, you, um, um, Miss Fucking Wonderful. Think of them. They loosely at one time, the drama okay, community Karen. was, you know, truthfully, mm -hmm. Trisha People, everybody watched her. At Even some Randy point. will say the, that. People admit it. And, Everyone and got up and tuned in. A lot of people in. know people have started channels and this and that and came together because of her. Mm -hmm. So um, you can't blame people for kind of looking at, you know, but when you've had enough, the channels that don't mess with her, the people that aren't in there anymore, the ones that have moved on, they had enough. I don't know, let it go. I don't think so. Yeah. They had enough. Um, and there's, there's certain people, there's certain gr a group of people that are constantly, and I'm not going to say who they are, um, but they constantly keep, give her relevance. They're, they're, they're associated we're with her, her chats. We're giving her relevance right now. And we're giving her relevance right now. We're and that's her why supply. I don't do this very often. But in all I say to Mandy, cause Mandy's like oh, that person, I'm like, they have not been hurt. They have not been burned enough. She was such a, oh, she was, but it was one of those things that after you'd seen all her shit, you know, going histrionic here and there and this and that, and she, then he, once you saw it enough times, you were like, okay, over it. The shock value was gone, but watching her interact with Sean was always something that people, whether they thought Sean was a, a 
complicit or whatever it was, people were interested in seeing how they interacted. Mm -hmm. And um, most of the time, you were just kind of dead. It, I, I was just tired. Kinda like, I was tired. Like you were um, like a shell of yourself. Like there is a lot. I mean, because of the people like Draven Script uh, and who's and the other person that's the people that are, I will, I have a bunch of videos that I could take off private so you can see me in that state. I'm not, I'm not ashamed of it anymore. Yeah. Um, and, you know, touching on, you know, it's like um, this little argument I had with Billy Nowhere, right? And how he would always say when we would argue that I've not ever been held accountable for the, my atrocious behavior. And I, my, my simple response to that is, what do you want me to be accountable for? What would you like to see happen Yeah. now? You know? Um, but then... Yes, that was who left. And he's back over there, you know, messing with her. And that's what I mean. It's a perfect example of somebody that doesn't like her or likes her or whatever and demands accountability from me, but he's over there messing around. You haven't been burned. Mm -hmm. You haven't had to go to court with her numerous times and kick her ass in court like I have. People expect some kind of reaction from me. I've been in court with her on more than one occasion and my attorneys, you know, mopped her up in the courtroom. That's that's all I can do. Yeah. You know, she's and then been, move on. She hasn't grown as a person for years, even a little bit. No. In fact I think she spiraled the the other direction. When you look at the the a the, how people act, Aww. um, she's and, Al's glad you found your voice, and everybody's thank you for your service. So when you go back yeah. and read that, Al, Al, um, uh, she's the first one who showed that little video of me mm -hmm. and um, said, "Look at in it. uniform from 2003," and kind of broke that when when Trisha and a few a couple of her cronies were perpetuating, you know, my stolen valor. Um, I, and I appreciate that uh, no matter where we go back and forth with Al, I appreciate that, that video. Cause it took somebody else in the community to put it out there. I couldn't do it. And that's why yeah. I always, when she starts that he didn't do anything, he made the stories up. I post the picture of his bronze star with the news article. I mean, I'm like, his service speaks for itself. There's not a lot of, of explaining that needs to be done. And when she says he was a pack clerk, he wasn't a recon scout, I don't care if he was a cook. He was in Iraq, okay? Well, I don't care what he did. It's the truth of that was is I got reclassified as a 42. I was, a, I was an armor officer, and I was a scout, did reconnaissance and scout work. And then when I got moved to Rhode Island, I'll they reclassified Casey. me into the 42, which is the personnel side of the house. So, yeah, the last five years of my 23-year career, I was a pack clerk. But like, I was, I, who cares? Yeah, you I could mean, have been picking up trash <laughs> after soldiers. You but, still were there. Not knowing, you know, even even the people that were on fobs and stuff, they're still mortar. I mean, it, it, just, it doesn't minimize. That's what I was like. You, I was like, placeholder, you look even stupider when you say that shit than you do. Um, you would get a lot more credit if you were like, yeah, he's this and he's that, but his, his service is pretty solid. You sound like a scorned little teenager when you start that. And it was telling that during your drunk stream, you said that Clint got on you because you talk about Sean all the time. That it was an issue there, too. That, that Clint's you, in about phase phase 14 right that's now. Exactly, He's still got a long way to go. That is exactly what and she I said. And I thank him for stepping in and... Throwing me out of the limelight so that she quit messing with us for a little well, while. Well, she said, she said, um, I, I, um, he said he got mad because I talked about my ex-husband all the time. And then she said, but I couldn't tell him that my ex-husband had choked me. And it's like, you couldn't tell him because you knew it was bullshit. And you knew that he would hit the road when he figured out that that's your MO, that you get pissed and you go blame men for that. Men see that shit a mile away. They see that you... You are not fooling anyone. Especially when, as we get older. Now, I'm a firm believer that women... I'll, t I'll ask him about the court Women incident. of the same age as a guy, say, like, at, like, 18 and then 25 and 35, women are much, much more mature than men. Mm -hmm. um, until we reach about 40, 35 or 40. Some men are a little bit more mature than others, where we kind of reach a mature level. But, you know... When you take a typical high school senior girl and high school senior boy, that the, the girl is much more mature mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, usually. 
a 25-year-old woman and a 25-year-old man, the woman is much more mature. And I think men kind of catch up in their 30s. That's probably you know? true. Um, so now that you were in a we're in a situation now where the target group is much much wiser and has much much more laps You're exactly around the track. Right. They much see more that laps shit. around mm -hmm. the track than when they were 25 or 30. Yeah. Um, I They've I would take a gander that. that that as a as a narcissist that young dude. They would fill some sort of supply for her, but the big main source has got to be somebody that can take care of her. Mm -hmm. And that's just not going to happen, you and know, because... She, well, she's so misguided. She thinks that when she gets in bed with somebody, whether they're married or not, that's suddenly her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. It's not your boyfriend if he's in a marriage that he hasn't even left. It's not your boyfriend. And and that's that's kind of a hitch, like it, like it's a challenge or something. Everybody wants to know, and I've asked him this. I'm curious what is what he says. I haven't been reading the chat though because I've what, been kind uh, of blabbing you, away. When in court, do you believe she was truly blacked out, or what do you think happened? Um, the, like okay, I believe that there's something that happens to her. I I I mean, I can step back and look at it. Um, the Doctor Phil thing, the court thing. I've seen it in other things. I don't know if she blacks out or she had, that's a frantic um, reaction. I just, I got to shut it down and because maybe that's worked for her in the past. Um, I will tell you from, from the bottom of, of as, as honest as I can, 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 can say, if that was not a seizure in court, it's it's an Academy Award. Did she lose she her had, bowel or her bladder? She didn't. She didn't lose her. I don't. I don't think she did. It wasn't a seizure. I. I. She had everybody hopping and popping. Had the ambulance on the way and all that. Yeah. That's all I can say about that. The, a lot of the um, websites say if you don't lose your bowel or bladder, it's not a true seizure. I don't know if that's true I or not. Know. I have no idea. But, um, I. He's pretty. You know, like you always get the straight from Sean. He I'll, believes it was probably. I will answer any question is on a. As honestly mm -hmm. as I can, I, I can, I can take okay. culpability for things that I was part of. Okay, I was wrong. Here's the this, here's the other thing though, is that when I you know stay in the community and I watch how people tell retell history, retell their side of it, it's a very very rarely a hundred percent accurate. It's very rarely what really happened. Um, so when you talk about legal things, that's why they don't care about. Um, the drama and stuff. It's so hard to, to, to quantify or give any, any um, authenticity to what we do here because if it's not 100% accurate and they go into court and they can defend it even a little bit, it's going to go out the window. When, when I was paying for an attorney while she was going to court um, for this assault, for assaulting this guy, she was she was fine. She was she was going to be okay in court as long as she had that guy, because the person that she assaulted was a convict, uh, convicted um, child molester, and he was on the. Um, so they said she picked the right one to yeah. go for. When I bailed, when I went to bail her out of jail, the, the the bailiff said, "Well, you know, she can't run around beating people up, and especially in court. But if you're going to do it, she picked the right one to do it to, and that's what he said." If she could have just had stayed any kind of, any kind of, um, stable behavior at all, she she would have she would have gotten through that. Yeah, she, it would have been. She would have gotten through it. But what ultimately happened was, and you've heard us say it before, was is when when I split up, I stopped paying her attorney, and then she started <laughs> then she started Human slandering right. our attorney who is her attorney's client and friend, and he dropped her, and then she had to get go with that's the public That's when she defender. got her public... She that, doxed, that's, that's what she happened. Doxed, she doxed our attorney and his paralegal. Remember when she got served mm -hmm. divorce papers and she went off about the date and that he was... The attorney was inept and so was the thing, and she doxed him. Brian Smith gave her a call and said, I warned you, you're done. Right. And that's what, why she had to have he, a public he, he defender. He said to me, I just don't want this to be... A, whatever mm -hmm. you guys do in your private life is okay. I don't want a social media circus. If it starts to be like that... Or it starts, to, then I'm out. And, and when she got the public defender, the public defender said, this dick dance you're doing is done. You're doing your You're going to have to do what they say. Uh -huh. um, he was like, you may have had a private, that's for your private attorney to do. You got a public defender and I'm not wasting my time. The one thing, and I've said this before, what we did not understand when 
Yes. When the when the Williamson County Constable served us with paperwork um, to go to court for me for what was what was it, domestic a civil a domestic, domestic abuse. It wasn't even and her and she was roped into it because she was my partner. Um, and my attorney took Mandy pro bono because of that. Yeah. Um, what we did not understand was us getting on that plane and yes, flying Alan. to North Carolina. Flying to North Carolina um, was his plan because he wanted, because the, the judge that was presiding over that was also going to hear the divorce. And when she came into court and did her thing in front of that judge, it was... It set the groundwork for At one point, the, the judge was even like... Yeah. And we didn't understand it. And sometimes your attorney doesn't tell you everything, yeah. but he's, he knows what he's doing. We were pretty frustrated by the lack of how it was going for a while. But when we sat there for the domestic hearing, and he saw her behavior and how she acted and the things that she did, it was the best thing that could have happened to us for the divorce. And we were so close then to mm -hmm. the divorce. It, COVID mm -hmm. is what stopped it. He was going to argue the date. That was the only point of contention she had. He was going to get the judge to say, okay, the date, the date, the original date on the thing stands, divorce granted. And then it would have gone through. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wouldn't have been granted then, but it would have gone through it at the other day. It would have started the timeline. And we had, he had a court appearance in a different judge, mm -hmm. but divorce court got canceled because of COVID. So... It was just one more thing for Mandy and I, that one more mountain that we climbed together because um, mm -hmm. it wasn't easy. I mean, COVID, you guys know, you guys got really close with your partners or you didn't. I mean, there's a lot of divorces when you're, when you're locked up and a lot of marriages got stronger. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine how I would have been if I had to, when I, if I was there. But um, he... What there was something I was going to talk about. Well, I her. said, are you going to oh, she, ask her about this? He said, if she pisses me off, he and says, she it depends how much she pisses me off. <laughs> when we first went in, and you guys have heard this before, but it goes along with the flow of this. When we walked into court, the first thing she did, first of all, she was in the courtroom, flirting with defendants that were there for domestic cases, like with Becca, with her daughter, mm -hmm. and so the very first that when they called us and they made us the last one of the day. Hey, crazy. Right? So that's normally what they do when she comes that's, to court. And he, said, he called they, that. He they, said, they'll, they'll. I said, they're gonna, we're going to go last. They're going to clear out the courtroom so that there's no witnesses to her, to her crap. And they when did it was that. time for hers, two more bailiffs came in. Two more bailiffs came in. We the very those. first thing she did was go, I'd like a continuance. I'm not ready. And our attorney went, this is well, what first, she does, The first Your the Honor. judge went, do y'all have an objection? And the judge, I mean, the attorney was like, absolutely. They came from Texas. They just flew from Texas during this pandemic for this. And she, when he said well, on what grounds, she goes, I didn't understand the magnitude of this case. I need more time. You've been watching too much Law and Order. What the hell are you even talking about? But that about? was exactly what the, the magnitude of this they case. needed to see. So our attorney said, no, this is what she's going to mm -hmm. do and what she's going to continue to do. All she wants to do is nickel maintain is, is nickel and dime maintain contact with my client and do this mm -hmm. over and over and they just flew from Austin Texas to be here and the and the the judge let that marinate and that just kind of sent the groundwork and then he was ready for everything and, and what was, they when two people were facing off for the domestic stuff in other cases they would say, go ahead and let you leave, and then in five minutes, the other one will leave. They don't, they, they don't let you leave they together. They do that just for whatever. So and we, weren't we the waited ones. the five minutes, maybe even a little longer. We were doing whatever. And as we were walking out of the courtroom, she busts back in and says, I need to talk to him, and talking about Sean. Yeah. And the, the she, bailiffs were like, and they they're escorted like, you can't us out do that. So door. we went down the, they sent us to the emergency exit. But it occurred and to me. And my attorney went and spoke with her. Right. It, it occurred to me at that moment. She was so desperate to get your ear just for a second. Like, if I can just get him, I can do my games and I'll That's have That's my it. main source of supply. And I, 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 right. I haven't been this close to him in over a year. And then she I kept need to saying, get my meat hooks in him again. Well, she kept saying, why is she even coming? You know, she doesn't have to come. Why does she even come? Because you filed charges, you dumbass. Right. If you wanted just him, why'd you file him on me? So we had a time where she would, you know, call my my lawyer's paralegal and they explained to her you you're the one who contested this divorce and my client has now and i have paid for a full divorce after that i didn't have to but then when she contested it i had to pay a lot more money 
They said, you did this. And when she you kept saying, this. when no. she kept saying, where are the papers? There's no papers to sign. The original set of papers for a non-contested divorce, she I ripped them up. It doesn't matter. But she contested the date. So once it got contested, it went into it like a status a status that it could go to trial. And mm -hmm. we had paid for it. I paid for, for all it of it. To go that. all the way to trial if it needed to. So there were no papers per se. They had to be drawn up because it had to say exactly what it ended up saying which is that she was throwing in the towel and all these bogus things that she had filed were not going to be honored. Mm -hmm. and, and so she made it seem like, you know, Sean wasn't going to sign. He wanted to be with her still. And, and it's like, he's like, oh my God. And, but the judge, the judge got to see this. She did regret the, all it. the behavior during the domestic thing. Um, and yeah, I mean, and so that was sort of the, I guess I can't say a hundred percent that that was my attorney's plan. But he, he used that, um, and he finally told her. She harangued him one last time, and he said, this is how this is going to work. Would come I don't know his, exactly what he told she'd her. She'd come by she his in the office yep. like two or three times a week. She'd be in that office. Um, of course, she didn't get to see him. The, she had to go through, and the paralegal started like, you know, whatever. And the paralegal was like, you were instructed to write a statement saying that you no longer want to contest the divorce. That's all you had to do. And she wouldn't. She wouldn't do it. You, you saw that on that that video that I repost every time she starts her shit. Our paralegal very clearly said, "This, if you want it to stop, this is what you need to do. And that was the other thing. She said, in order to drop it, meaning the assault and everything, the assault allegations and everything, I just want to keep my car. And then... And the dog. And then, yeah, and then I'll, I'll let this go. The whole domestic abuse, all of that, I'll let it go if I can keep my car. Who... What and, the and, hell? And, and, and my attorney's camp was like, you have the car. Right. Sean does, is not coming back for the car. Mm -mm. We he were, doesn't we care about the car. We resigned that the, the, we were going to get it if we could, but if not, the, the bank could come get it. But she hid it. She put it in right. impound. Well, um, y'all know the history. She, she did something to the tires, I guess, tried to, and then when that didn't work out, she, I guess she, when they finally found the car, it was, had bags of garbage that had been sitting in it for, ever right yeah and the and she had vandalized it the ones mm -hmm. of you that um don't have twitter or didn't see it we found out a long time ago that it was a upside down between the auction and this and that eleven thousand dollars for this volvo is what would have been owed they wrote it off because of the circumstances of where it had been how it had happened and then if you saw what i think not only did he not pay get one that we got it one bread cent for it they sent us a check yesterday ally did so yeah, it, you, it, it, you, you, that's ridiculous. They didn't ask me for a single dime. So what, how that ended up on my credit was that there was a repossession that I have paid off yes. is what it looks like. So it's not the best thing, but it, it's the debt is gone. And then when we contest that one, I'll probably go too. Yeah. It's, um, but the lady that we were working with when we were trying to get the Volvo and stuff was like, it could potentially, she can be responsible not for the charges and everything, but for what Something. happened to Yeah, twelve dollars and fifty five cents. <laughs> yeah, shit. Angela's, yeah, so I got a I got a check from them. And for, he will he will put his twelve dollars and fifty five cents in his I'm gonna account. put the twelve dollars and fifty five cents like frame it next to my bronze star up here on the wall, I think. That was so awesome <laughs> when we found out we owed nothing. I was like because we were prepared to have to fight it um, and to do whatever and when we got the statement, I saw the eleven thousand. I was like and then at the end it said total pay due um, from whatever zero. Here's one of the things that um, I had to, because it was perplexing for Mandy, because yes, Alan. what a narcissist will do is they will act a certain way. And you guys uh, watch her behavior like um, vandalizing my things, um, desecrating things that she thinks Taking were close to me, do all kinds of things like that. But then when I would turn around and like cover up her tattoo, her name with another tattoo mm -hmm. it sends them into the stratosphere and that's how a narcissist works they their behavior yes, Karen, you're right they they have certain behavior but then if you respond in a certain way it's it's unacceptable and i had to explain a lot of times like why is she go i mean Thank she you, she went ahead and did this and destroyed all your property all you did was take her name off your body and, I, and it was like, that's what... I couldn't figure out, like, when we had the... the behavior. That's when we had the tattoos covered up, it, you know, I knew that, you know, that's what you do when you move on. She had hers covered up a long time ago. 
But the way she freaked out, like he wasn't labeled anymore as hers. Well, but it was just like, how dare I? It mm -hmm. was like I, I vandalized something. Now he's the biggest Falcons fan there is. Yeah, when people, <laughs> it's kind of funny, was it? You, you probably so, in. There's, there's the, there's the <laughs> cover up. It. <laughs> it's an Atlanta Falcons thing, and so like if I'm like at a swimming pool or something, because this. These are the corniest tattoos you can ever get. You know when you see somebody with a great big, like, he could, he Green Bay He Packers. was either going to do Georgia or the Falcons, whichever so the guy, it is. So people would be like, wow, uh, you're a pretty big Atlanta Falcons fan, huh? And I just go, well, I like them more than I do my ex-wife. So, And they're like, yeah, right on. <laughs> they're I, like, you I must understand. really like the Falcons. Well, I do way more I like than my ex-wife. They were like, oh, pretty, it was, yeah, I was on there pretty big. And I had like, it. Gotcha. I was tagged. I had my husband's name, too, and I had to get it. We did it the same day. Y'all remember when we yeah. did that? It was um, funny because it's like. No, well, actually, a lot of you contributed to it. When before we got together physically, and I was, you know, he I loved would, me first. I he would, did say that. Let it go. She said that the other day. Go ahead. I, I would look at that and go, God, you know, I'm, I'm, we're gonna get to. We've already planned the rendezvous and all that, and oh yeah, she's got to look at some other girls. That's just God. I gotta tell her. And it was a big one. And and I'm like, I got. I got a tattoo, and, and you probably should know about it. And she goes, does it look like this? And she showed me the other one. I went, we're all we set. Both, we had we're to, good. We have so both our, our exes first, on So our there. first meetup, we were representing <laughs> other people. Um, the, the insurance, um, when she put herself on your insurance after y'all had already separated. Oh, yeah. That, um, I, I, we had, that was right about when we crossed over. That was so... I still, it, they finally stopped about a year ago. I stopped getting these bills from like Geico and other things. She would continue. Oh my God, Daisy. Continually. Hey, Lisa. Just take insurance out yes. based on her being my wife. And so I would get mm -hmm. bills and I would get collection notices. And I would call these people and say like, no, I'm, I'm separated. I'm going through a divorce. Um, and yes, it was, it, it's, I'm not the first one that that's happened to, but she would constantly... And it was more than just to get insurance. She would do it to two or, with two or three different mm -hmm. companies. So I would have all these insurance bills from. Oh, all those den know. dental appointments she went to. She had she put down Sean as the responsible party. The, the thing about what you guys didn't see um, was the fact that, mm -hmm. and I didn't I, I didn't want to I didn't want to tell y'all, but I also didn't want her to know, not her, but the ex to know what it was doing was she was destroying my credit. You know, I was trying to do the right thing and, you know, I'd fix one thing and she'd do two more. And um, there's not anything that I could let the narcissist know what was going on. Um, mm -hmm. And then when I got the divorce papers, that's kind of like the golden ticket because mm -hmm. you show those to the insurance company. We were always one step. Um, let me tell you something. It is possible to contest stuff on credit. A lot of the places don't even follow through with it. Once you present mm -hmm. the, the, you know, I'm content, continuing on this point, then the other place has a certain amount of time to respond and prove it. This is not, notwithstanding this, just for those of you who have credit issues, you can repair your credit yourself. Um, you, you can pay people too. You can pay attorneys, but you can also do it. Um, if you just write a statement um, contesting it. And if you're with somebody that's bad enough or infamous enough, yes. like if you get, if you have somebody that you're getting divorced from or something and you're in a bad situation and they go to prison, you can pretty much say something like, well, he's in prison and this is why. And most people help, you know, are sensible about it. She's kind of like that. When it was like the oh, allied situation, they were kind of had a hard line about the car and where's the car. But after the people at Allied Loans dealt with her for a little bit, mm -hmm. they got it. Mm -hmm. And she had never you know. called. Like when she said that she, I had that recorded somewhere that she'd called the bank and did this and that. And it, they, she had never called Ally. It was no, um, they're asking, I mean, I know the answer, but have you since the divorce been contacted by either of the kids' fathers, Braden or Becca, since? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have. A, I, I, I'm thinking about getting in touch with them. We're going to start our own like little support. Well, group. would you? Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> I know. Wouldn't you agree? And I think you did. The reason they turned out as well as they did is that you had an influence on their lives. I mean, Fairly I like really. to think that. Yeah. You know, so I have two stepsons. Both of them are in the military, or were. Um, not that I had. A, I mean, you know. My current stepson. I'll ask. Let it go. Just one second. Um, 
I don't know if we, you say your son. They know your son's name, right? Yeah, yeah. I think Tanner was already down that path um, before I married his mother. But, you know, his father is a career soldier, and I'm a, I'm a career combat arms soldier. So he's in combat arms. So there's, you know, he gets a lot of mentoring from his father, you know, and, and that's a good thing. But also the combat arms side of it is something that, you know, we joke a little bit about Yeah, Tanner it. balances the it really back and well. Forth yeah. Because of his life, his career is more mirroring mine than his father's. His father's was um, in finance. So it, it it's it's but, a little different. But, I mean, Braden went but like the military. But like Braden, uh, my stepson. Tried. Um, yeah, he successfully, from what I understand, he's out of the Marine Corps now and living his life. I'll ask and, that too. I see your questions. And then Becca was going to go and decided not to, uh, but she's, unless her life has changed, she's in a relationship with, with, you know, a military person. So I'd like to think that that I had some positive influence on that. You know? So the other thing I'm combining too, but it's the same question. Do, have you had any contact with either of those two stepchildren since the divorce? And do you miss them? Um, um, honestly, like, like I had contact, with Rebecca until she showed up in court on the domestic yeah. with her mother. And I, I, I had to understand that she's a young adult. She's got to make her decisions. Um, she had, you know, her mother's always going to be her mother. So she kind of sided with her and I had to let that go. And I um, approached it when we were, we got together to, you were in her life. Um, she's just as, you know, not, as much as but if she were to want to come and visit if she wanted to maintain contact i was okay with that until then until until then she showed up in um, but yes when i was in texas um i do thank her for time i was history. trying to maintain like i told beck as long as you can pay to maintain this car you can drive the car i was helping her get the license plates and this and that when she showed up in court um she had you could see her mouth and some stuff to mandy i, I had to i had to break break ties with her and then, but I will say that when TT put her on the stand yes. and tried to get her and started to ask her leading questions to perpetuate my abuse, Becca said no. We do thank her for being honest. She said no. She I've never witnessed to. that. And you could tell that that would that her, her mother put her in a really messed and up. And I place, don't think that Becca she knew she bend. was going to ask that. I think she no, thought she, she looked was there. She and, thought she was going to speak for Bear. Right. That she was going to say, I've got Bear. Mm -hmm. I've got whatever. Right. And her mom pulled a... Pulled an okie doke and mm -hmm. asked her some questions and tried to get her to say that I was, you know, abusive. Becca said no. And then when it got time for her to be cross-examined by our attorney, I asked my attorney not to do, not to cross-examine Becca. Need to. And he, so we let her go without having to go through any more. So that was kind of the last of it. She, she mouthed at me when I looked over after whatever, and, and she and, and her mother were just kind of in disbelief that what was happening was happening. Um, she mouthed, you are fucking unreal. To Mandy. So to that, me. I mean, I'm like, wow. That's what well, she did. I gotta go to the bathroom real quick. And, um, so that, that, at that point was like, that was the the end of that she was having trouble deciding where she was going to need a place to stay um way in the beginning of of when the divorce started and i was like sean does she can she does she need to stay with us and he was like you don't want that you don't want her mother to to be like in, connected to that at all um but yeah the second she walked into that courtroom what she was completely not welcome in our house ever again um but, um, yeah, so, and, and like I said before, for as much as, as she, you know, Trisha had plans to do everything that she had to do, she showed up to court with two spiral pieces of paper, and when I looked over and looked at it, there was just scribble all over it. She thought she was going to get the continuance, um, and it was denied. So she had no, um, she wasn't prepared. And she, um, like I've said before, when they were, was a judge or the attorney was asking questions about what her own documents said that she she had contested it with and she just didn't have a copy of it she didn't even know what she had said in it and so when she was like can i see that and our attorney was like at the first time she said it he goes no you wrote it that's what he said he goes, your, you wrote is, it this is your document 
Um, the other thing that she did, which Sean said, she said she's going to go and play doughy, doughy fawn until someone says something that pisses her off. And mm. you're going to watch her show her shit. And she did. The second our, she got pissed off by her attorney, she gets those shark eyes and she's yeah. on the attack. I mean, so like I can look at a different situation. Like we look at YouTube videos. There's a couple guys out there that I'm like, let's watch this guy. Look, he's a narcissist. Um, what's the um a lot of those family channels erica 35 millimeter rick sykes <coughs> yeah we've he's, talked about them before they he's split a narcissist. up um and he's still he's trying to do his own channel where nobody watches them and he he, he they were on marrying millions i don't know if it, that's not where we first saw him but that couple was on marrying millions the one where and there's he was, a big age gap he's like 68 <coughs> and she's like 25 the one where his family owned a jewelry store chain and they live on a yacht but it's like a broken down old moldy yacht yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so I watch his because now he's got a YouTube channel and it's so bad but he Aww. he told the story so he comes on and anyway he's what's that other guy that that you show every once in a while with the long hair that dude the long hair the guy that the real weird dude that's always talking yeah I am looking my about karate lessons and oh stitching girl is the one that told me about that um something Hamilton I'd have to look um sometimes i hear he beefs with i, I don't know but he he he's scary he's the one y'all might weird though but he's the guy that when the girl didn't return his affections he would go live three times a day mm -hmm. like he was talk like he was yelling directly at her at the mm -hmm. screen and it's like dude yeah you're talking to you're making vlogs for people but like he was talk and, it, and the way he would talk the way he would yes, gaslight uh -huh. and say things i'm like that hey, is Elizabeth. classic that's classic narcissistic behavior, and you you just see it when you're out yes, of it. Yes, you Beth, just see you're it. right. It says those um, the person who represents himself has a fool for a client. Um, someone that's in here and she can admit or say that it's her. She worked for the court system for many years. She said judges can't stand mm -hmm. people who represent themselves. It they feel like it's a waste of their time, mm -hmm. um, and it's disrespectful. Um, so they might say it was them or not, but that is the, the truth of the matter. And that's why people that represent themselves, unless they get a lot of press attention, they very rarely win their cases. Yeah. Very, very rarely. When once the press gets involved, they yeah. have a lot more legitimacy. That's why, guys, when I sit in the community and I hear people, we've been, we've all known each other. Everyone knows who I am. Um, five years, six years, whatever it's been. People continually start start talking about cease and desists, about ta taking people to court. Mm -hmm. um, it I gotta move him. He's shaking. It, he's playing. He's awake now. I just sit there and go. This just got to be. It for makes effect. him laugh when people it's are. It's got to like, be for drama. You're going right? to jail. You're going to leave in handcuffs. And he's like, No, you're you, not. No, you're you not. Drive <laughs> to the place where they are and talk to the police. The police are going to go. Okay, all right. Go down. Go look at the magistrate. Fill it out. Um, we'll do whatever and then if it does come to fruition and yes. you do end up in a courthouse it, it doesn't go anywhere man i mean it's like slander when people say they're slandering you have to prove what you lost how your reputation was hurt you just because someone gets on the internet and says a bunch of mean things to you yes tammy um I'm whether it's against the law or not against the law it they have to decide whether they're going to litigate and i would have thought that by now those type i mean even diane today was talking about she was ridiculing cease and desist but just a few a couple months ago she was talking about i just don't night. i just don't um it's just i thought we would know i i hate saying this it's not a good thing to know but there's nobody nobody around unless people just aren't telling us that have been inside the courtroom defendant you know um prosecuting divorce uh both sides of stalking things than me yeah. I've, I've done it it's not good that i know but i do and i i can't think of a time where i sat down they they took the divorce serious but we didn't have to be there for it um and they did looked at us seriously like we were Seriously. bringing some law changing like some something to the table it's 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 um 
ridiculous. The, the courts don't it's care about ridiculous. YouTube bullshit. And then the thing is, you go and you say, well, they did this and they did that. And, and if you're trying to make a case for slander or online harassment or whatever, the only thing that the person or their attorney has to do is say, well, look what they said. Right. And the judge goes, oh, okay. It's like that. It's a cat fight. Um, most attorneys that I've talked to, especially in North Carolina, say yes. We've got a long wow. way to go with cyber stalking laws to make them in what the procedure is to because there are some legit stalking. There, there are but cases. But not out because there. someone doesn't like you. But not because you're in a drama community. Mm -hmm. And especially the the one thing that you have to understand that I've learned is if you divulge something very sensitive go. to your life, some abuse that you were with, that you um, went through. Um, some kind of traumatic event that you went to went through and you explain it and you pour your heart out on a vlog or on a live stream and then someone turns around and ridicules you on a vlog from somewhere else or slanders it or whatever there's nothing that can be you done you put it out there you know ju and ju being an asshole isn't against the law it just isn't well the judge also broke it you down know? to the it's brass tacks or whatever which i didn't think about but he said we have a right to freedom of the Yes. A speech. And that's you why, can yeah. say whatever you want on YouTube, on on Facebook, on right. wherever. Literally anything. And on the other side of that is if somebody thinks that they're being attacked, <laughs> that they're being hurt, that they're being abused because of some cyber, they have every right. Every right. We can't sit there and tell them they're ridiculous or they're, because that would be also not the, the mm -hmm. justice system. We have to take these cases. We have to give them their, their right, their day in court. We have hey, to Clancy. give people their dignity, as ridiculous as they are. But we did also find out that North Carolina needs to close this gap where you can go to a magistrate and you can have um, them, because it goes to a judge when it gets heard, but they will sign it mm -hmm. and put it on the calendar almost, yeah. and guaranteed. And what do you, you just have to say, I'm in fear. Right? You have and a few have things. In North it. Carolina, uh, my attorney, uh, a couple attorneys that I've dealt with, has said that they in that it. state that the laws there are even a little looser than, like, say, Texas. We don't have Georgia. magistrates. There's no magistrates but, in Texas. But the thing but is, yeah. is that it, it's it's easier to bring something. Yeah. It's almost guaranteed. Um, we have someone who, Seabreeze went through it. And I, I however you think of whatever. Um, Crystal Ehart didn't need much to get Trisha to get some paperwork for Trisha. Um, Trisha didn't need anything to get paperwork against us. Um, but then you eventually have to go to court. Um, it didn't take much for Trisha to get paperwork against, um, what's, what's the girl that, that the woman that talked, got in touch with Becca. Um, what's her name? Um, Miss Fairy Garden. Oh, it Marla. Didn't, it yeah. didn't take much for that. Uh, I seen this all happen. But then yes, once it fans. all all the resources are spent and everyone sits in court, nothing really ever comes mm -hmm. of it. N nothing comes of it. Nothing. So. I'm gonna remove that one. Um, I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss any of the other questions. He'll see the ones that I missed, or I I sometimes didn't catch it until someone said that's a good question and I'd go back up and look. But uh, um, yeah, I, I should be paying better attention. No, it's okay. He and the thing with Sean is, I'll that right Al said this the other day. That um, Sean takes responsibility. He's not saying that he wasn't, um, that he's easier to believe because he takes responsibility for what he should take responsibility of. And I think some of the, what people say is when money was collected um, for hurricane relief and stuff, like when she got money from Shoot the Shit, from um, these different, Lisa Arkey, these different places, um, Sean did, huh? Yeah, Sean didn't. Like he, it wasn't some conspiracy that they went in together and came up with it. Um, and that's an interesting story too. Um, he paid for the hotel room when she was getting money for the one hurricane. Um, he, he was paying for, he, the hotel was paid for for 10 days. So that's where the prime rib during a hurricane came through because they were living high on the hog using that money. Um, she had extra money because of the fact that it was already paid for by him. So when they, she was like, I need a hotel or what it, it, it was done. It was already done. He paid for it. Um, just little things like that, but he certainly didn't. Um, and I can say this cause I know him. They didn't sit down and say, okay, there's a hurricane coming. Let's calm the community 
out of money. Um, and like I told him one time, she had called me early on trying to hit me up for money. Very, very dry begging. But um, he didn't know that she was always hitting people up for money. I didn't know that. Karen, I don't know. Like, I don't, Karen, I don't know the extent of whatever, but you said yourself, she always had a sob story and needed money. And he I had no I was idea. I care of her. I mean, she, she was getting almost everything that I had. That what happened with that? We yes, can, we can tell that story about about that one real quick. Make um, some water. So that was the hurricane. What was the hurricane? Because that was when Gerald Jackson what came onto the was scene. It um, when we went to Asheville, what happened with that was, is I was still working at the beach when that hurricane was coming, and we had decided that we were going to stay in town. We were going to hunker down, and we were going to stay in town. And I had taken my paycheck, which I was only making like maybe. $350 a week at that job. I had taken that paycheck and I had gone to Walmart because everyone was clearing off the shelves because a hurricane was coming and I bought a, like a 60 quart cooler. And I put batteries. I spent my whole paycheck, bought a whole bunch of water. I had all those MREs. Remember the MREs? They were there. We were like, all right, we're going to be able to hunker down. So somehow I went to work that last day and I was coming back and Lisa Arkey, had convinced um, Trisha through, you know, Pam and Rick that she needed to leave, right? And I didn't know any of this because I just spent all my paycheck. I would have taken everything back. Um, it had given her enough money to go. Um, and so her and Becca got in the car with Lily and we, we had Charlie then. And I was, then, then that plan, they were going to go to Asheville. I was going to stay um, with Bear in the apartment and kind of ride it out and make sure everything y'all remember that right and she was getting in the car and she got money from it was from Lisa Arkey was shoot the shit in them and she took off to a hotel okay and then I ended up then I was there for a couple days and the night before the hurricane hit me and Bear went and if y'all remember that's when the while we were sitting in that hotel that's when the the when she was in the tub, member talking about President Trump, and then she freaked out, and we split up or whatever. She decided to get in the car with Becca, and um, when she was she was accusing me of sitting sitting in the hotel room smoking and all that. Well, I was. That's the only way I could be with her. I was smoking the whole time. Um, and but what people don't understand about that was that my parents had paid for our hotel room. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they gave me they gave me like $800 to pay for 10 days in the hotel room. So the money that Lisa Arkey gave her, um, she wanted to use and go to Harris and Cherokees and, and eat prime rib and gamble. So that's where the prime rib during a hurricane yeah. part of the poll came in. Um, and I told her, no, you're not going to do that. That's not the right thing to do. She got mad at me. She jumped in the car with Becca and they went back to Jacksonville. That's what she got. That's what made her pack up and go she was pissed off because i wouldn't let her do what she wanted to do so you she know? was just gonna go like party it up with the money and yes i got i i smoked down and was you know and i was sleeping i woke up from from my nap and she was leaving with her they weren't even gonna tell me they were leaving so anyway so that's what happened there it was um and that ended up being let me have the phone baby yeah that's that was the and you remember that, remember? Uh, yeah, but I didn't know your parents. That was, that was the hurricane, and that was about six months before Evita happened. I have all these videos If y'all remember all that, them, if y'all remember that event, too. Oh, yeah. She, Al has all of those videos. Mm -hmm. of, um, the other thing, like, hold on. I'm making sure I didn't miss anything. The other thing that is interesting to me is I don't know whether she's ever bought subs or not. I have no idea. Sean has a pretty unique look on it. Between Sniper Wolf shouting her out and being on Dr. Phil, there was no reason for her not to have triple the number yeah, of she, subs she, she, she had. Should have, she should have had a very successful mm -hmm. channel. And you know he's but a numbers yet, yet guy. again, there was never any proof to me. I don't know where she would have got the money to do that, to buy them, but... Um, I mean, I don't know. I just He's right, though. Between those two things, she should have... She should have had way more than 40,000 subs from the stuff that... That she'd been through. Yeah. I mean, Dr. Phil alone, if she had any kind of stability at all, she'd have got her 40,000 subs. When Sniper Wolf sends everybody after you, she should have got another twenty or 30,000 from that, at she least. She did spend the week at that other... The, before, remember when she spent the weekend? You were, like, 
she was like posting porn shots and she was putting, I can't, I love, like alluding to she was cheating. Remember? And she was, I, you don't, I don't know whether she was or not, but I she was, but you said she was like posting things like, you know, just sexual things that when? were. What, what time frame? Karen just, it's, she was in the hotel. I think it's the time that she went to the hotel before Evita. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that was the beginning of the end. She, I think what happened with that in hindsight, um, she was in class with somebody. I think she, she said, I need to go study and all that. She went, that was the weekend before Evita. I think she got turned down. I think she went there to, um, in hindsight, now that I can step back at it, I think she went to Wilmington. She got the hotel. She was thinking she was going to hook up with somebody and, and she, then they turned her down. That's what I think. And that's why she came back and she was very over, over sexualizing with me. Oh, I see. And that's cause, um, that's what I think happened. Um, cause it was like, she was posting, it. like I, I'm enamored with just shit like that. And you were like, it was like Instagram stuff. Something like that. Um, this question gets asked all the time. We might as well answer all of them. How did you feel about the fact that she had her boobs out and did stuff like that while y'all were married when she would do that on camera? I mean, how do you think I felt about it? I mean, I'm not trying to get defensive, but nobody. So what was her reason for doing it when you would say that? What do you mean? Him? What, what did she tell me or what do I think the reason is? I like, if you were to, I, well, I guess that's kind of I mean, what you would answer. Did when she took like pictures in the bathtub with bubbles with a crown on her head and used it as a profile picture, how did that, how did that come over? you just like, whatever, or how did that? Well, I was tired. You remember, remember Christmas Eve when, um, or New Year's Eve when I was working and you actually texted me because she was drinking with a with couple minors, of minors, yeah. if y'all remember that. Mandy Troop said, hey, Captain, how you doing? You know, how's it going? I was at work. I had none. So a lot of what happens, I don't even know what's happening until it's over. Or she would act a certain way. Tomahawk Sean would do a vlog and and. But while he Spin would be it a certain doing, way, he'd be she doing was undoing. To... She was doing something else while I was well, doing the vlog. <laughs> it's like you know, yeah. I, I, but like, let it go. Said, and I guess this is a pretty blunt way to ask it. Why didn't you tell her to stop? Like, did you ever say stop pulling your? Yeah. Head? Oh, you did say okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it. it and see, then she you was... gotta understand, but from the time I met her, I mean, she had the she had the posh and naughty stop shop. So, um, she was always very sexual. Always. So it was just really was what was her audience. Oh. And if you think about it, you know, this is my distorted way of thinking was it was more harmless to do it on a camera would and not around physically around. That people. makes sense. Um, but what I realize now is that, and I've said this before, you know, when you're dealing, cause when, when you start to get your self esteem back and your self worth, then you try to figure out, you know, narcissists can't fill that hole. Her thing, I think what happened with her early on is that so sex good. works for a gal in her 20s. She gets a makeover. You know, sex works. Guys will... But that's the only thing that ever worked for her. That's the only thing is over-sexualizing stuff and dangling that out there. Um, it worked. Her shop was, was, you know, a sex shop. Everything that worked for her was sexual um and so for because not all narcissists are sexual um but her insatiable need to fill whatever that is i don't know what you call it um it could never be i like i said i could be the best looking man in the world i could have treated her like a queen i could have had her in the fastest car had that multi-million millions and millions of dollars put her in you know taking her all around the world it's not enough for a narcissist no. eventually you know, that cycle, it, it's not going to fill that hole. She said something you very know? telling the other day. She said when she was talking about, you know, this relationship she just went through that he's with somebody else now. And she said, you know, I can't have kids. I don't have a uterus. And that's telling because that was one of her techniques with those baby dads. That was, that was one less the weapon that she had. uterus yeah. was her way of at least holding on and trying to make them yeah. make that jump like like john make that jump leave his wife be with her that or was... he knew that she had a tie to that mm -hmm. source of supply for 18 years 
That was a fascinating thing she that she said. She had a tie. Said. She's, mm -hmm. she, you know that you're going to try to, any, anyone with any shred of decency is going to try to maintain some kind of relationship with their child and there's child support. That's, that's a narcissist you, way Kiki. of securing that supply. You said so yourself that if I had a, ba I had a child that I was dealing with with her, that you, you wouldn't be able to do what we do. We, you no. wouldn't be able to be with me like this. No, because she's a bat, she's batshit crazy and she uses those kids and she'll you just, oh, it would be awful. Um, Kiki says, I've been a silent watcher now for years since the divorce. It's so nice to see how happy he is and the love you guys share. Much love. That's Thank awesome. Thank you. I... I hear that two things that I hear that that really make me feel good is that that type of stuff. Presley was a long time watcher that never commented for years. Um, and she knows everything, didn't she? She knows everything. Grew up in a military town. There was Navy, wasn't there? Yeah, she grew up in Newport, Rhode Island, which was a Navy town. Braden's father was was a, a seaman. <laughs> he, he was a sailor. Um, oh, so he yeah. was. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, and he was much older than her too. Um, he was about my age so so when you look i mean 26 to a 17 year old is way different than 35 to it yeah to a 26 year old just it, i had no idea that, that his yeah. dad was in the navy yeah he's about my age um so yeah and her but he her did father, go to, she said that you when you came in one of one of the things you used is i will protect you from his father i don't even think i've told you that that she says that you did go to court i did you did uh, yeah. go to court to help her i keep, had physical confrontations mm -hmm. with, with Braden's father. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Well, th there was a therapist in between us, but, um, like you in your army uniform one time. Um, yeah, I, I would go, I would to go to court. I would go to court with my greens on and I gave her credibility. I gave her, I gave her credibility by walking in there. Cause it was a circus. Thank both, you, both parents were, were pretty messed up. And, um, Thank you, Viola. Yeah, so she would walk into court, and she'd have this guy sitting there with, with army greens on, a captain, you know, company grade officer. Yeah. Yep. But didn't they slip a picture? Like, oh, no, that was your divorce. That was during the divorce to Jessica, yeah. <clears throat> she did nothing but make his divorce harder from, yeah. his, from his first wife. Um, I mean, that's not for us. I mean, that's not what this is about. But she did make it, on purpose, make it more difficult. Well, I think on purpose, meaning that that's where she thrives. She thrives with chaos and conflict. Mm -hmm. How many how many of you all that are watching this um, had to step back and go, I can't believe I did that because you interacted with her or she yeah. came after you or something. Sally has and, said and, that and before. I can't it, believe. You, you, you went to that level and you, you fought with her. Um, and then you step back and felt bad or greasy or dirty. That's what she does when there's conflict. I think moments of peace and levity are painful to a narcissist mm -hmm. or, all or to someone with that type of pathology. I think it's sociopathology. I think that they have to create controversy. They have to create conflict. And very, very comfortable in conflict. Which is one thing when you're in your 20s. But when you're getting into your 40s and 50s and you still like that kind of drama. You still yeah. like acting like a total moron. That is very strange. And then you have a somewhat solid They're main all source right of supply, you know, all, a main source of supply, which I was. I had a good reputation. I was a honorably retired officer when I did retire. Um, I had, and I didn't get to use yeah. any of my preferences that I'm doing now. I mean, I my my take on veterans and. She I think we have as much we have as much opportunity as any protected group of people. But um Presley says that um she sat back and watched her make a complete psycho idiot and all the abuse she did to Sean and the night she was painting herself and slammed the door on Sean. I was so glad he made his escape. That is what happened that night. Presley's been around. She I mean. has been around. Everybody saw I didn't actually see the whole thing that night. I, I got in right about the midsection, like when the police came or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the police got called by the neighbors because she was screaming, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. She was outside running around. Um, and the, when the cop asked me, he said, what are you still doing here? I said, would you let your wife run around like that? And he went, no, I wouldn't, okay. And that was all they needed to hear. I'm just a dude trying to take care of my wife. Mm -hmm. 
you know, so. Presley has a funny story. She talks about one day when she fell asleep during the, I don't know if it was the Vita one or not, but she woke up and she, Trisha painted herself with paint. Presley's like, I was trying to figure out whether I was dreaming or what the hell was going on. What was the one that was like, who's, what was her name? Uh, the one that, that my son had therapy after had to go Oh, to that therapy. was uh, Stacy Little. Yeah, remember like Stacey she Little? saw the. Oh, he had to he 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 had rehab therapy. and he, therapy. He saw those movies. He's been in therapy. And ever Sean since. was like, "Well, I can, I can understand that." Yeah, I can understand that. That he, was Stacy Little who said that she was a sergeant major and I was her soldier. If mm -hmm. y'all remember that one. Do you remember when I would do? I don't know those of you who even knew who I was before this or whatever. But do you remember? I would touch on her when I would do vlogs far, far, long, long, long before, like two years before there was anything. And I would say, you are making an ass out of yourself being so provocative and showing your breasts to your husband who you profess to love, who's a veteran, and you show yourself and like I that. And you have, Whether he lets you or not, you are so disrespectful. Remember, I would say that on the vlogs. as a wife of a military yeah. career, that's where your interest was. Remember right. you said this guy. There's no way this guy could be an officer. And yeah, then you first heard I me. Did. Then you heard me. Then a he did his first logs. thing, and I was like, "Well, I'll be damned." Um, I'll be, look at that guy. No, I want to be an officer, but I when wanna, I cry, you're right. I when I grab that guy the, and <laughs> I want to marry him. And Shit. you know what? We've talked in retrospect. <laughs> I said, I guess even when we were friends, there's always a part of me that was fairly protective and mm. kind of like, okay, like. When when he was finally done with her and we were talking and whatever, and I remember thinking, well, what if he and I don't work out, which is understandable, but, you know, because of whatever, um, but he goes with somebody else. And I was like, no, I don't. It's like that when um, the, uh, the song, I don't want to wonder in 30, 30 years who you're married oh, like to Gwen or whatever. Stefani that's and what's Blake so Shelton. perfect about it because that's kind of what it was like it was like i'm gonna hang on for this i don't want to watch him you know whatever and um that was kind of interesting that's amazing in hindsight because i remember living in the condo and i was watching our, your recovery vlog and you were kind of um t um talking and you were kind of looking down it was like your your camera was on your dashboard i think that was when that's and, way in the beginning and i could see your steering wheel you were kind yeah, of yeah like that was the very beginning and you were yeah. talking about it and um i was i thought you were very in, I saw, it's interesting and i remember saying to her hey do you know who this mrs atx is and she was like shark eyes she's like man. she's she, a stupid bitch she man. figured it out pretty early you know that's the what these people it was, pick up on it i guess i didn't i didn't um really hey robin i really didn't think too much of it because she, every time we got in a fight she thought i was screwing somebody somebody in the community i mean which I, usually I really, says really, that they are i really i really needed to have a lear jet to get around as much as she thought i was it says maybe i missed it but did sean already answer the question about classic computer and makeup by mandy from let it go I, you'll have to re-ask it i don't, I don't know. what's the makeup by mandy part of it how's that in classic um you love it. See, she, I did, when I first started making them, I did, I put it on the dashboard or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then when I started the recovery vlogs, um, I was shocked that, that anybody, especially in our community would gave a shit or got anything out of them because why though people weren't open about their, their, you know, their uh, drug addictions. It was when the opioid crisis was really underway and it was, at first, I was like, I'm just saying um, I am no different than a bum doing heroin. It just how you. Well, that's because you accept. I was you like, accepted you accepted what, what was had happening. You know, it, it's so hard for me because when you're like, I'm an alcoholic and, and I, I, I look at you and I'm like, Let you go. are more, you are not, you know, and it's like, because I'm not one. So. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people were like, yeah, I was like. There were times I've said this before. There were times when I would be low on pills that if I could have found someone in my cell phone that sold heroin, I probably would have gone and gotten it. And it's like you can live in a huge house and you can whatever you can dress a certain mm -hmm. way, but at the end of the day, you're no different. Addiction is addiction. That's mm -hmm. all there is to it. You do things you would never do, um, things that you would never lower yourself to do. Mm -hmm. And I hear these stories like on Soft White Underbelly. And they're not so far fetched. Mm. They're not so, so not. A lot of those people tell the story, and and they used to have a, a yeah. car, a house, a, you know, all of those she things. She told me what was telling to me is when she said, "I used to watch the show Intervention," 
just so I could see people that were more fucked up with me. I until, did. Until I became those Until people. I became, I used to watch yeah. Intervention and be like, just making sure I'm not that bad. And then like he said, mm -hmm. I would watch it and I was like, I'm probably worse than them. And it wasn't fun to watch anymore. I still no. have a hard time watching it now. Um, because even though I've got some distance and stuff, sometimes when they're using the drugs on camera, you kind of, you, they do it for, you know, for whatever. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Th I saw it. Thank you, Presley. It pops. Thank you. Thank you You're Presley. so awesome. Um, they, they, a lot of times they'll show them doing the drugs and, right. and, and even though I've never, you know, done cocaine or done any of those things. Sometimes when they're being explicit and showing it, you start going, well, I never tried that. And, and not that you're going to do it, but it just, it triggers something. Um, and a lot of people probably agree with that, especially if they're like, I'm addicted to Oxy and Xanax or whatever. And you're just like, oh man. But you were, you, you got sober two different times um, yeah. on two different things. And you said that oh, if you had you. been doing those pills and drinking you would I would have died oh absolutely you, you, yeah, you would, nobody can take that much and and survive um mm. but that's how i fooled myself well i'm and not drinking her, and these are all prescribed i'm not abusing them forgetting that i'm and i tell this one all the time because i hear these stories and i'm amazed to hear them because um thank you of who she is you know and what she is and, and what she means to me and what she's done for me um you you can't you can't give somebody too much credit like you've heard and it was ironic because katie told me this you know we were talking about when we were on the first when we were on miss Fucking wonderful and we were talking about i said i would never do anything to jeopardize her addiction and katie said it and it's ironic because you know where she is now mm -hmm. she said sean you're not you you don't have the power to keep her sober or you don't and mm -hmm. it's and you don't have the power to make her relapse yeah nobody and that is so it's such a powerful thing to say um because uh, she is like everything. And thank all I tell to her when I say, when I hear these stories that she tells is I just thank God and I thank her okay. for, for, for living to meet me, you know, yeah. to, to, to come into there my was life. some pretty dark times. You know, There's, um, when you finally, you know, demoralized yourself. And, and like I've said, I would, um, I don't like to describe it in detail because I don't want to like trigger anybody, but I, I, changing tables, I would crush pills on changing tables at restaurants and then they be changing and tables then use the powder the behind those of you who've been you know you know and then you, you look up the residue and and that just wasn't like mm, that's just enough and then you think that's what you so all of the, like there were times i had y'all saw my closet everybody i don't know why i showed my closet but i apparently did because everybody remembers it um i just lay on the floor in the dark and just not wait to die like I was, you know, hoping I would, although, but it was just, it was, it's bad. Um, it's, it's just something but, that when you climb your way it, out of. What, what did you, what was the final thing that um, made you say, I got to go save my life? What do I mean? Do you remember? Was there any one thing? Um, well, my daughters, I had finally, they were not doing any more early refills mm -hmm. and I was always getting them filled early. Um, so even the physician's assistant at the pain clinic was helping me talk to the doctor to try to, to get him or whatever. And I, I only had a very few amount of pills left. And I knew that my daughter's graduation was in a few days. And I was, knew I was going to be sick, 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 sick. And like when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, I, I just was like you finally get done spinning your wheels. And if you make it through it and you get to that point, um, you decide because it's scary. People who talk about that withdrawal, you know what a note. I mean, those are that's a bad withdrawal. When you say that, people go, "Oh, I have goosebumps just thinking about it." You got to face that fear, and I I did take Suboxone and did you know whatever, but when you know that right about you're gonna hit withdrawals in the in the facility or whatever, and everybody's scared of that. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's, I, it's, I, like I said, it's I when you tell me that the worst withdrawal you saw was from tramadol it was from tramadol see that's what i had to be i didn't have to go inpatient but i was taking tramadol mm -hmm. for years i was active duty i was a badass soldier and but i had a bad i had a bad back and i had you know i had bad ankles so they would give me tramadol it wasn't supposed to be any big deal i could take a handful of tramadol and i walked 20 miles wow. i could stay up for 10 you know 24 hours do whatever i had to do 
But what started happening was, is if I didn't take it, I would get sick. Mm -hmm. It never made me high. Oh, yes, you know? Karen. I am going to ask him about that. So, so it, ma it makes me feel better about my, my thing when Mandy says the worst withdrawal she ever saw. Because it was awful when I didn't have my tramadol. And I thought, well, this is just tramadol. It's nothing. I, I, these other, it's not even a heart, but it's, it's, it's the only thing. I quit smoking on my own, all that. But um, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. They, they gave me gabapentin and weaned me off. That's amazing. But. Karen is asking, and I, so she tells, the beast tells a story. She says you, you used to let her overdose. And there's one where she said she was laying in a chair overdosed and you just sat there. And you've told I mean, me that you, I mean, you, you I, I watched used to, I used to watch her breathing um, because I was so scared to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And if you ever watch somebody when they're like, and they just, they just huff their breath in all night. Yeah. And then, you know, you watch the rhythm of it, and then a few extra seconds pass, and they don't breathe, and, and then it just scares you. It keeps you awake. So if that's her, if that's her version, then that's her version. But I used to sit there and and um, and watch her breathe and stay up all night. Yeah. While she. And only only a malignant narcissist and an addict alcoholic would blame their drug use on their husband. <laughs> I mean, he didn't go to those those clinics and incidentally i mean because you said when they talk about medicating people right and and to subdue them or keep them in check when he was still in the military someone was supplying him with stuff to keep him in check mm -hmm. from her supply yeah i mean who people, do you think that was when she says stuff like um he used to i used to get my drugs and he used to take them i mean that that's her version that's fine but she used to get that prescription filled, and when I wasn't feeling some kind of way, or I was getting, she would give me that. She would give me the pills. That it, that certainly did happen. Mm -hmm. um, so if that's her version of it. Then that's fine. That's I mean, interesting, though. She she expresses it the opposite, saying that the medication was used to keep her subdued. But yeah. when he told me that story about what his cocktail was during the day, when he was still in the military, now he had already. PTSD yep. was in full force, and that's not a story for today. But she honed in on his untreated PTSD, and she just became the candy man to make sure he stayed there and, and stayed under her thumb. And see, that's, that's Mandy's that's my words take on it. to say. Um, I, I accept my, my responsibility. I went and got help for my PTSD and what it was doing and how I was acting. Um, and... I did that, yeah. and um, but I will. I'll not blame anybody. I won't blame Trisha or anybody else. Right. Um, for that. No. Yeah. That. That's my take on you it. You know. Um, that's but my I will take. say that it, it did save my life going there because I when I look the, okay. the worst thing in the world is running into a veteran that you're trying to help that's got you know post trauma stress and they just they don't want the help they want people to feel yeah. bad for them. They want to blame the VA. They, they want to blame society. Um, and I was I was that guy for a little while. But once I realized, I mean, how many, you guys have heard me say this before, how many professions in this country have national holidays for them? Veterans Day, mm -hmm. Memorial Day, whole holidays dedicated to us. How many professions do you, when you retire from it, it gives you 10, 20 point preference in hiring? veterans preference they have light they have places parking spots for veterans um yeah we no one forced us to do it and we have as we have more opportunity than any other protected group of people in this country and once we stop feeling sorry for ourselves and stop thinking that people owe us stuff you there's there's a whole world out there um and that's what sort of what was perpetuated in that relationship that i was in was that um i'm broken you know, I'm wounded. You know, I'm hurt. I have this stuff. Um, it, it was just and, a, a storm that came together. Of, and when and when mm -hmm. you when you sit back and you get your mind straight and you have the, the support that, you know, to stand by you as someone that lifts you up and you start looking at the tools that you have from being a retired veteran, you look at what's out there, you start getting the job yeah. that I have. You start using the 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 things that you you start building that together 
to get the things that you start to have. Yeah. I mean, three years ago, if I thought that I'd be sitting in my trailer, right? <laughs> in my 2,400 square foot trailer with a fire in the fireplace with this woman working the job that I have in, in, in conjunction with my VA and my retirement, building my dream, um, I wouldn't have yes. believed that I would, would, would be there. I, don't, I didn't think that was for me. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to have that. Yeah, that when we met you know, and he and, he was explaining about whatever and, and whether he wanted to write or what he wanted to do, I was like, I don't care what you do, but I want you to know if if working at a convenience store or doing whatever you're happy to do, that's to do it. But you are worth way more than that as far as your skill set. And he didn't know that. Mm -hmm. He didn't he didn't um that's what I'm saying. I wasn't allowed to really have the vision. Right. Because when you're sitting with your partner and they're telling you one thing and they're trying to keep you in one area to ser kind of to serve them. And, and, you know, I was serving her, you know, I, but and they don't you can't rise above a certain station. They need to keep you fixed. And a lot of that, if you look at her mom and dad wow. and how the story of her mom and dad meeting, I know that I don't That's know or Robin. think it's my probably not my place to tell it, but I know it. Um I mean, it's generational thing. Um, her, her mom and dad. Yeah, her. Oh, I've never. Yeah, I, mean, I really don't really, know. Yeah, it, for as I don't much know as she thinks he tells me everything. I don't really have a problem with those two. So, with but my I mean, but, -in -law, but so also I there are things that 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 he. I mean, I'm sure he knows things about about the beast. I would never ask, and I wouldn't expect that he would ever tell me. When she she tells stories about um, her teenage years, and a lot of them. I think there's truth to him. If you look at her maturity, I, I believe people that are abused or go through cer certain kinds of trauma, their development stops. Wow, and if Robin. you listen to her sexualization of stuff, it sounds like an, an, a ninth grader when she talks. Yeah. I think there was something that something happened very... that, that stunted her development. Um, pretty, I mean, I don't know exactly what it is. And she's probably changed the story nine or 10 million times. Yeah. But there was something. There was something that wasn't right. Robin, yeah. I, was, I did Suboxone maintenance too. Suboxone's a hard one to get off of because the acute withdrawals aren't so bad. They set in in about a week or two is when those set in. I found that one to be pretty hard. Like everybody knows when you're going to kick Oxy or something, you're going to have about 36 hours of hell, and then it's going to slowly, slowly start to get better. I never went through 36 hours of hell because I just was too terrified of it. Um, but, yeah, that Suboxone is a tricky one that um, if you can taper, you know, you – you should, but the funny thing is if we're taking Suboxone because we're addicts um, that aren't very responsible with medication, if we could have tapered, we wouldn't have been in the predicament that we're in. There is no tapering when you're not, there's none. Ricky had a point, you. he said, there's no one that could have stopped me when I was, there's not a force in the world that can stop you when you're on that path. Love doesn't, nothing does. I mean, I, I, I to, to live, live with this woman and to love this woman and to spend, you know, your world with this woman. She's got an addictive personality. Oh, I too. do. I mean, if she sees something that she likes, whether it's so, a kind of like soft drink or it's a type of food, mm -hmm. she's going to, she's going to. Like two iced teas twice a day. Yeah, I, I don't. That's her thing. And it literally and, is two half, half. Yeah, she'll go. And I want it. I mean, she wants it. She wants it. I, I we're going to, I mean, her, her cravings when she's pregnant are going to be. Yeah, no I'm going to have my task in front of me. But I I understand, um, right, Elizabeth? I understand a little bit how to communicate because of that too. Yeah, and I'm here to tell you, um, I'm not. I don't give all the credit to it because I, you know, I've learned that I'm I'm a pretty good dude, um, and I deserve somebody like her. Yeah, I don't um, understand but, how can someone can convince you that you're but, not. But um, I mean that personality might have influenced your your decision making to get with me too yeah. a little ricky, bit ricky you know? i i agree so, with you um, um i i mean ricky's just saying he doesn't believe he doesn't buy a lot of the abuse that she talks about but that's her story i don't yeah, I, I, mean, I don't or i mean but she's but a ricky, miserable person but ricky you have your own journey so everything that she says is relative to what you've been through. Well, and, and what and, I've always said, and this was before Sean and I got together, when it was just literally, truthfully, Trisha, every man in her life, be it 
the landlord at the dream space, the cashier, someone else's husband. I've always said this. She's going to say they either want a raper, effer, or what was the other? Dater, raper, or killer. effer. Killer. Yeah. Killer. <laughs> it's been a long time since yeah. I said that wants to, 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 to rape or kill her or, or, or effort. Everyone. Everyone. And, I mean, and he was like, that's kind of, I mean, they fall into one of the three categories. There's no gray area. Um, let me see that for a second. Let me see so. But anyways, that was like, that that was my take on it, like, from pretty early on. That that, that was kind of the, the, you know, the trifecta or whatever of how she had, I mean, most people don't have interactions with men on, on, you know, professional level or whatever, or if it doesn't work out and then automatically it's one of the three, mm. you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, here's the thing, me and Sean, like when she talks about, you know, that, that she, you know, wasn't allowed to have any friends or whatever when she was with Sean, I, where are your friends now? Right? Why do you keep losing people now? Um, Sean I lost is still my friends family. with family. I lost with, everybody yeah. in my life. I mean, I was very alone. Um, I guess you're... It, 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 yeah. And it wasn't that people didn't love me. They just couldn't do this with me. They couldn't be on this. They couldn't ride this with me. It, it, they were scared. You know, she would. She, it's an addiction like any, he was addicted to the trauma. But I mean, like other people they had to protect themselves. Yeah. They had to protect their family. There's somebody in the community that um, was reaching out to me and wanted to help me when, when yeah. we split up. And um, she said that she was scared to help me because right, she, she just knew I was going to get back with her and then, then I was going to tell her who was helping me and that she was going to come after their family. And so I just told that person that you, you mm -hmm. don't help me then because... You know, you should, no one should live in that kind of fear. Oh, and the other day you know. she said that you didn't stay in your car. You did stay in a hotel. You absolutely did live in your car. I lived in my car all the that, one I night. I stayed in the like... hotel one night. Oh, so the first night. No, were... no, it was like the fifth night. Oh, my God. I just Can needed, you imagine? I, I needed to, if you sleep in your car, you're six foot five in a Mustang. After about four nights, I literally, I had to get horizontal. I had to lay in a bed. I, I. It's either that or go, go sleep so on the beach. That's so sad. Because you can't, you literally, you're, you're, we're meant to lay down to yeah. go to sleep. You can't, I mean, you can sleep in a chair for a couple nights, but after a while, your body starts telling you, dude, you, you have to lie down. It's just not possible. And I was going to work every day. Yeah. I'd sleep in my car. I'd go get a shower at like on base because I had a military ID. And I'd go work my, my shift. It's crazy. And then go back to my car. And sleep at night. Sad. And I, I know you're her, so not a victim, but I gave her I gave my work my ten day notice. And after about five days, my, my manager was like, Yeah, we got this. You need to go take care of yourself and go live your life. And so I gave them one more week at like five days at work and then she was like, I can't make you just come And in. and when the tires got slashed, whatever, he was already in Atlanta. <laughs> what was I in Atlanta or was she I didn't in know Asheville? That. I well, was in Asheville. I she think didn't I was even in Asheville. know he was out of town. So when she's trying yeah. to call the police and do this and that, he's not. He's like, I'm not in town. I'm here. They didn't even call me. So she she destroyed the tires of her car. Nobody even tried to find me. Car. Like like four or five years ago, when she would start the shit, the, the police would call me and say, "Where are you?" And this and that. They didn't even do it anymore. Um. So Mandy, at what point did you know you were falling in love with Sean? And the same question as Sean. Um. We crossed over on May the ninth, and I would say by the fifteenth. We yeah, were, we, we said we loved each other before we were even physically together. Um, and I'm glad she told me first because terror. I was like, you cannot be in love. Terror, this is a terror. <laughs> you cannot be in love with somebody. And then I hadn't looked at the whole thing. And then she told me like about 10 days before we hooked up physically. She was like, we, she ended the text conversation by saying, I love you. And remember, you said I didn't answer it right back because I, I was driving. I didn't see the text. It was like twenty oh, minutes later. Oh, I probably so, and I was like, "Oh, oh my God. wow!" He's, she said he just goes. He's to me. hitting said, the skids. <laughs> yeah, but, but I, then I, when when he when we said it to each other within a few days, he was saying that he wanted to marry me, and I would have thought with his history, he would have been like, "I'll date you. We can even live together." But I don't want any more wives. Right. And he didn't. He said the natural thing was to want to get married. Well, the, the big one of the biggest revelations Bye, is so we we got together on june 2nd 
and we were together till the sixth and we didn't communicate to each other we were sitting Sorry. in the airport I and i was saying. i was fighting with whoever because i had to pay for the extra bag remember oh my god that was when i first saw this side of sean when he freaks out yeah and um he, and and she wanted me to stay yeah i did and she was just she was gonna say just stay and i and it would have been one of those like well, where am i gonna live in your back seat but um if she had told me to stay i would have. yeah but she didn't the, the, then, what was funny about that was he had paid for a certain amount and his luggage was like seven or ten pounds over not very much and so they charged him another 170 or something like that and he was so pissed off at them and I was like, you I know, just and, got thrown and off the we, flight. <laughs> we had we didn't we didn't know each other well enough for me to say this, but in retrospect, it's like just take some shit out of your suitcase. Yeah, I think you did. Kind just take of. some shit out of it, but you'd already paid for it. It yeah. was too late. So, I came back and I'm like, well, but that was kind of his his baseline, and that's how you know everything. I don't, I don't have. He I don't couldn't the... process it. Yeah. As anything other than a disaster. And then and then when I was learning to be with with Mandy. I had to drive. I had so much anxiety. I couldn't ride shotgun anywhere. Yeah. And I would, and then when we got, even after we got settled in Texas, I, I, I went through a, a period of time where I woke up every morning yeah. with just this crippling anxiety. It he just, would, he'd be like, and you know, and we and, started walking, I would get him out of bed and he would, we'd go look at the Creek. And yeah. We, and would, we would just get the that. day going. And, and I would, <laughs> And it was funny because Negs would always, you know, he, he had his channel. And I didn't really watch him too much. But I remember he would always would say mm -hmm. crippling anxiety and crippling depression. And then when you really have it, you know, you're like, that, hey, dude. I, you we, know? It's it, not funny. <laughs> we figured, I mean, and that was the thing. I was We figured out that a change of scenery where he wasn't staring at the same four walls or whatever made all the difference. It was in the morning. And no, pretty, mm -hmm. I pretty... I got through it, but it was it was like Groundhog Day. Yeah. Um, I just That's we had cat. so much, such mountains to climb, um, and I just Mandy. wasn't. I wasn't in the spot where I just. I didn't want to. I didn't want to hurt her. I didn't want to let her to down, heal. and I didn't know. I didn't really understand. It's like. I don't want to fuck you up. That's that was the big thing. Is I I, I knew I was in love with her, and she was taking me on and no one had ever done that and i did not want to fuck her life up well the the and, other and the biggest thing really was anxious. and i said it from the beginning i was like we had our little apartment especially when covid hit it was mm. like the safety of me and him and your mom understood this too mm. it was like a time when it's like lay down your load it's time for you to heal mm. you know what i mean mm. like um and i'm not saying that like i'm mother Teresa, but it took me like three months he to needed unpack time my bags in our to apartment to decompress and to heal and he didn't need major you know we were trying to get through the divorce and doing whatever but um he f thought he had to be on his a game and he what he was everything i ever wanted and it was like mm -hmm. it's gonna take time for you to not be at that level mm -hmm. of chaos and to know what to do when it's quiet a lot of times when he thought he had horrible anxiety it was because things were peaceful yeah things i were mean serene. I, I, I had to learn to just people mistake that for i had to learn to just I learned a lot. I learned hey, how Mandy. to be a better dad and what I needed to hang on the cross for and what I didn't. I didn't understand. Um, I didn't need to listen to the YouTube. I didn't need to listen to the people who didn't want us to be together. Yeah. I didn't need to listen to the ex. I didn't. It was just. It was a very I, long time that we did. I didn't watch. He doesn't watch it still, but I mm -hmm. went, what, about three months without even looking at what she was doing. But I, I, I couldn't look at it at all. And um, it one month turns into two months, and two months turns into six months, six months turn in, and all of a sudden, um, it's just, and then COVID hit, and it's just me and her. And it just, I don't know when it finally went away, but I can, I can ride shotgun now, she can drive. I, that used to be, I had to drive. Mm -hmm. I, in traffic, I'd just be, I'd have anxiety. And it, nothing to do with anything, but it did. I just didn't know it. I'd wait, and it just, it's gone. It, it's gone. I live in my house with the love of my life. And in a zoo? In a zoo with cats and dogs, and we're going to get chickens. And, this one's and asleep. Um, maybe before we're 80, we'll. Have oh, a baby. yeah. Mandy, <laughs> Mandy um, she's in here. She said Google kept holding her comments, which does happen. If you say whatever, they'll, they'll automatically filter it. 
But like I was saying earlier on Twitter, you have to see this sound bite. She, you're, she was wiping her face. Mandy was on a live stream. She's got great live streams, by the way. Y'all make sure you're subscribed to her. She's Manic Mandy. They're, they're entertaining. They're good. They're everything. But she was wiping her face, either taking makeup off or about to put it on. I'm not sure which. And I, I came in, I said, Hey, and she goes, there she is. And she was like, she was like, um, whatever. She goes, sorry about your luck, TT. And she was like, that's another one that fucked up their own life. Had a good man and <laughs> let him go. Or something it was like that. so funny. It's a classic sound bite. It was so funny. <laughs> oh my God. But my favorite part of this, like, that's another one that fucked up. <laughs> She's hilarious. Yes. Um, <laughs> remember when, when, um, Mama Beth couldn't come up with the name of who was blackmailing her, so she took a shot in the dark and said Mandy. And the whole community was like, of all people to try to pin it on. You could yeah. have pinned it on a few people. It might have stuck. She's but, like the nicest, literally the, the nicest person in the like community. Manic you know? Mandy is, is doing this. I'm going to tell If you don't... I'm, <laughs> and she was like, I don't even have a PayPal. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, it was so funny. I was like, you picked... That's all she could come up with on the top of her head. I can show receipts, and it was like, it, he is she, a good man. She was like, I, I don't, I don't even have a PayPal. I, I don't. It was like, and <laughs> she did, she goes, was like, she took it all in stride. She was like, I don't know I what don't the fuck she's talking what about. She's talking about. She wasn't pissed. She didn't drag anybody. She mm -hmm. was just like an extortionist. Uh -huh. That's what it. Is. <laughs> Mandy, the extortionist. I was like, of all people, you could have picked. I would have picked someone who's more contentious. But Mandy literally gets along with everybody, unless you really do her wrong. I don't think she gets along with Katie, but then nobody got. Is she? Is her channel back? Because someone was talking about her going live. Is she going live Who on Beth? Instagram? No, Beth's in the Fat Farm, the um, the Fat Farm rehab, breaking her own ankles trying to stand up. Um, the no the. And anyone who Katie, doesn't like Mandy saying that, um, because you hear people that are say, "Yo, it's not very nice." No, the debt that. That woman. That hoe has everything coming to her. Yeah, she, she, she was. Saying Sean was dishonorably yes. discharged. What? <laughs> And I was beating the hell out. And it's like two things. And, and it, the thing is, there's two things we don't deal with with anybody. It's two things. Going after my service, saying I'm, um, and perpetuating that I beat up. Mm -hmm. That's it. Ex. Those are the only. Those are the only two things. But the, but the, the good thing about those is that you can try to put that out them. here and even your own friends will go, no. Yeah, you're right. Mandy even says. Even your own friends will be like, no. She dishes it out right. as good as she gets it, period. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, she does. But the thing is about, if you watch her old videos, this is Mama Beth. If you watch her old videos from a few years ago, she was not so crazy. Yeah, she got crazier. Yeah, I, I'm not quite sure what happened, but she could put some sentences together and make some sense. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the hell happened or whatever, but um, talks... She does. She doesn't ever have like anything, and she really is. When when I say she's in the fat rehab, that's where she is. Yeah, it, she's it, got like it, diabetes, it, it might not and there's, be she's the, still eating Burger King. It's not the she's nicest the, way to put it. Her, but she it, makes it her husband is. bring her Burger King while she's in the rehab. She'll be live, and, and, and he brings mm -hmm. it. it. It it's yeah, and then she'll go. And ahead. at the whole time, she's attacking people. Well, yeah, the last, you know? the one that she, she, she's famous for going after kids too. And I'm talking grown kids. Um, she'll go for your kids just to get a reaction out of you. It's freaking crazy, man. But for real, getting cookies out of the oven. Um, yes, she does. Man, man, she does have Cash App and PayPal now, but she didn't then. Um, <laughs> before, I mean, we all are going to head off soon. But, but we did finally answer all the questions. Did I answer your question? We had a few story times. I, I, I think I, I got to get him four and a half hours. Now, if you get the creme de la creme someday, he'll tell a story that I don't even know about. Some of, and see, some of the stuff I don't know. I didn't know. The thing about it was if I had started, like, doing that from the beginning, um, like, I'll tell a story and then it, my reference, to, you know, oh, while I'm telling it, I throw out something else, and then people in the chat remember uh -huh. those times, and then so they can put it together. Truth says, before but, she goes, she, um, don't forget the disgusting picture Drew Rizzle drew of you. That was despicable, too. She has been saying she's going to show it again. Ooh, show it, dummy. Show it. My only point I with mean, that, and we've resolved it, was I, I brought Sunshine Sally to task. I said, you are against bullying. You are against things like that. But this is going on. And she... 
she, it wasn't right for me to do that. I shouldn't have put her into that thing, but it was, and it, why I've, she drew a picture of whatever his, your saggy balls that they say that you have. Um, we've already said they're not, they're nice and empty. They're not sagging, but she drew those and stuff. And it's like, who the freak sits around and does that even pissed off. Yeah. And she got mad because she demanded answers about the Volvo and was tagging mm -hmm. Sean after, 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 and he's going through a divorce. He's like, stop said, adding. Me, uh, that's all I said. And I didn't, she, I didn't get, I didn't say anything. I just said, just don't add, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to have your little, conversations or whatever yes, that's Karen. fine you do you boo but just i i don't need to know you're doing mm -hmm. them you don't need to tag me in them you just do what you have to do and that was it and that was it she and was then after the races it, it was funny because there was a couple of people that didn't really like us trying to defend her they didn't really know her and it was like no just wait for it and then another one i thought it would be a lot longer but she i mean there's been a couple people and it, it's not like we just decide to drag people on here. It's normally a reason, and we, you know, and they, everybody that we've gone after has shown themselves for what yeah. they are, whether you like them or not. And I'm not saying you have to like people or not like people, but there were just reasons why we didn't want them around us or being associated with us, and they've all kind of every single one of them. And with her, we didn't even say we didn't want to be associated. We, didn't say we that. just said we just, please don't just do that doing and this. stop demanding right. answers about the Volvo. It is tied up in a divorce because at that time there was some some what did the who towed it? Was it the the yeah, loan company? Well, it turns out she had it towed by the city and it was well, sitting I just in remember we were sitting in a hotel in know, North Robin. Carolina getting ready to go to court for this for these fraudulent charges and she was demanding for us to come on to her live stream and give her answers and it was like we can't we won't we can't do it we'll talk to you later but, just untag me and, and y'all if you believe nothing else if you believe you know you can think whatever but if you believe nothing else when i tell you that her ass got kicked in court and she looked like a total dumbass i'm telling in my line she looked like a freaking moron and I'm not going to get into the history. Of and, re and really, and really, my attorney was kind of like, there's two things. First of all, the attorney is like, you know, it, you don't need to broadcast this all over. You're, you're in a divorce here. This is real life stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing was like, I didn't know how to explain it. You know, it's people like wants to want to know or they want this. They, they thought I should do more that you need to take her to court. You need to do this. I did. I did that. But because it wasn't like. And he hasn't been held up in job. We would have to somehow prove that he has not been able to get a job because of the slander. He's lost if money. I, if I, if I said, if I took any streams lately and I contacted oh, anybody in North Carolina, they're like, what are you doing? Well, I live in Georgia and I do this. They said, well, then do that. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't, don't crawl back into this arena with this. We, you're, we paid really, really good money to get all my ties mm -hmm. cut. Why would I, why would I do that again? And, you know? um, yeah, she do. We do sometimes call her the, the beast, the placeholder thought T H O T sometimes. But the other day she goes, I am a beast. You're damn right. Beast mode. Um, I showed the actual definition of a beast. It's a bovine <laughs> and that's a cow, right? Something like that. I mean, that's one of the nicer things I could say. You know what I mean? And for as far as Lynch. for me being called ATM all day, every day, every day, Penny, I make, I make sure he gets everything he wants and needs. Don't worry about that. You don't need to work tonight. You're good. <laughs> I'm going to take you to bed. Trust and believe. The first thing I do on a Friday, and it is a partnership, we, I cash my check and I hand him all of it. And he puts it in his wallet and we spend it on stuff. I don't steal it. What do you think, guys? Should I take her to bed now? Should I go to He's, bed? He does have to go to work tomorrow. Hey. I love you. Should I? Um, this is, I love you, This too. is Cran Watermelon for anybody who's never had it. It's Ocean Spray. There's no spray. vodka in it. Yeah. Cran, cran Watermelon. It's kind of sweet, but it's not bad. I had the Cran and, Tropical. I liked it. Yes. That's, that's so weird to call me like ATM. And then she said I bought him all of this stuff and whatever and that you were with me for my money. Who leaves her husband for somebody else and, and makes out like a bandit? It's not like her ex was going to let her take everything <laughs> with her. He's like, you can go if you want, but. But we did, I we did come up together with the down payment for that truck that yeah. made it substantially. So I guess in a way we did. Yeah, he, the first thing we do is he gets the baseball cards he wants, or football, or basketball, or whatever he wants. And then maybe we paid the bills after. And then that. maybe, and then 
we know when they oh, put no, them out on the shelf. Show them, babe. She, I mean, you get your nails. Yeah, but this one's broken. Yeah, but she she keeps them nails. The hair got did last week, it and, and I love, love, love that she can do that. And I love, love taking care of my wife. Aww. I do. I mean, it, it, it makes me feel like a man. That's good. I mean, that's awesome because it's it's the way that it probably should be. Yeah. You know I'd what I mean? I'd say so. It's, but it's, uh... I was looking at the number of people in the chat. You see it's at like 110 right now. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was the thumbs up. And like, so it would go to like 111 or 112. And then it would go down to like 108 or 107. I was like, what did we say? We're four people unliked it. And I've realized that they're not oh. liking it. They're just. Karen, Karen, sweet little Karen says, can we hear the baseball player story one more time? Another time. Yeah, we can rehash yeah, we're gonna, it. We, we can do that one if, if, if need because, be. But what was the other one because that I didn't a, tell? Some of the parts about when she showed the phone with the dick pics and stuff, I don't know that whole thing of how mm -hmm. it unfolded. I just know she went and slept with a baseball player in a hotel room that was way younger than her. And then he was like, Matt, not so good. The guy went to like <laughs> high school with, with her son. Yeah, it was like, uh, not so I good. I mean, that's and, like some and, porn hub stuff. You and know, his like, family said she's never to even breathe his name again. Yeah. <laughs> Well, his, his family did. That's what I'm saying. That his family was like... Both his mm -hmm. sisters were kind of like diving in there trying to pull him out of that. But that's how... That's also how diabolical she is. When she was like, oh, oops, don't look at that. She made sure when they got back together that Sean saw that picture it's, of him. It's just classic so, narcissistic but behavior. I mean, it's like, we're trying to work through this these problems, but let me... Let me thank you. Let me... That's what, you in that the she was face like, oh, this. oh no, how did you yeah, see that? It was crazy. So it, just it, so you know, rookie, she had pictures of the old boy, the Johnston. I think I phone. think at this point he because he's married. He married he was his yeah, longtime right. girlfriend from high school, but they're married now, and I think that She was a side piece. She's a career yeah. side piece. That's mm -hmm. all the girl that is all she is. That's all she'll ever be. And now because she's old and haggard looking. When she, the angry ginger is apparently the only place she can go into and have hope of pulling someone even for the night. I mean, when everything's sexual, you yeah. need to, you need to, you need to keep yourself up. You know, when you get into your forties, that those sexual games, all these men were, were wise enough. We, we've, we've, we've been down that road. We've, yeah, it's, we've, we've been with a few of people like you. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, is you got to keep your game up. I mean, there's plenty of... <laughs> the cat knocked the bully sticks down for the dog. Oh, my God. The cat and dog work... Go ahead. There's they plenty of people who... Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Look, like, if you're going to use your outer looks and just sexualize everything and use pictures and stuff, there's just a whole gang of y'all out there in your 40s, 50s, 60s that look really, really good. She ain't one of them anymore. You know, she doesn't keep herself she up like like people sleep. do. The thing and is, is like, I, I, I don't hate her. I don't care enough about her to hate her. But I am going to say this, my friend. You better up your game if you have a hope in the world of not dying by yourself. If you even hope to get a 31-year-old, 40-year-old, 50-year-old, whatever you hope, get some sleep, get, get, get back on your meds, <laughs> get on your meds <laughs> and get a job. Yeah. And you might just find somebody that wants to I don't think they realize like I hear like he made me be on meds and this and that he he kept me on med you need to be on medication he said did I make her be on her psych meds the hell I did the hell yeah I made her take <laughs> take her her psych meds fuck yeah I did it's funny because I'm very open about the fact that I'm on triliptal and Paxil if if someone's looking for like a combination that for me has been amazing but um I said I guess you know I guess all of them have weight gaining principles but gaining weight still comes from eating so i guess maybe you'll eat i don't know but um i accept that i have to be on it and i've been on it for a long time i tried to wean off a long time ago i've been on since high school not that combination but on something and um so when i joke and go oh i'm almost out of my medicine oh well sean's like you better it has nothing she's to do like, with well, me it has you know, nothing having, to do with me yeah, but he knows like, he's like she's like She's like, well, I've got about three more days worth and I'm having a hard time. I can't get hold of the doctor. I'm like, no, 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 no. Do I need to? Yeah. No, 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 no. Let's get that refilled. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's programmed to. Um, yeah, that's one thing that's like. <laughs> it's know, funny. You need, you need those medications. We're going to get them. Well, and also, like, I'll say, this is a good time to cold turkey off of him. And he's like, 
and I, so. I'm not. I've been on. I've been on Paxil for probably the longest of any of them. And then when I got off the opioids and was having, they added triliptal. Um, uh, 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 uh. Oh, I see AC. That I didn't mean to. I thought you removed. I removed it. I didn't block you. I removed it because I thought you were saying that he didn't let her have friends or get a job. He's she's throwing everything. He's throwing everything off. I know. The cat they is sitting together. up on the on the table he right now. He takes the trees, pushing stuff off for the dog, knowing to that get. the dog will open it for and him. He learned He's that from, smart. from Storm. Yeah, that thing you, they have little mini bully sticks that we bought today, and Stoyer had one. They were on the counter. The kitten knocked it down, and then Sawyer got it. They worked together. I have to catch up with the chat. I, I really didn't watch the chat, but I, I like it that way where, like, she reads the you know, questions and stuff like that. Well, you so. get a, I mean, you always have a lot of support. I, the biggest thing that I'm glad people see is what a good person you are. You may not agree with this, that, some, or the other, or whatever, but you... I, I, a lot of people look at me and they're like, she's just kind of a bitch. And, and, and I am, but you're just a all around nice guy. I mean, what is that? Will you bring out the best what in the fuck me? Is that? What is it? What is it? I don't know. Oh, it's a leaf. Oh my God. I didn't know what it was. But, anyways. She was like, what the fuck is that? I didn't know what it was. <laughs> but you're also funny. We need to go to bed, though. Yeah, we got to go to bed. Okay, guys. Taking her to bed, I hope guys. you had fun. And there's not a single guy in the chat that's like, no, oh, you're taking her to bed. They're like, man. You're so you bad. Motherfucker, you get to no, take her to bed. No, it's not like. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I will talk to y'all later. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks, and guys. Man, we went the, two and a half a, hours. Today. If you just, oh, it went, the, AC says, thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. The, um. Thank you I'm going to leave it up. So if you're just now tuning in or doing whatever, I'm going to leave it up. Because why the hell am I? Be about Man. it. I said that, by the way. I always say, be about it. If you're going to talk about it, be about it. I leave your like, stream up. We went, That's me that said that, that she's talking about. We went, we went live at 8. And I said, well, it's 8. So if I went to bed now, I'd get seven and a half hours sleep. Do you have I to be there at 4? I have to be there at 4. Fudge. Yeah. That's all right. Maybe I'll just stay up all night. No, don't do it. And, and plan your big business venture? Yes. <laughs> okay. Good night, We'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Right, thanks. Thank you for tuning in.